What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and thanks for watching the International Podcast. Once again, we did have audio issues. These are related to something that's going on in Skype. We're having problems as I continue to do these recordings to get it to sound just right. So you're going to hear some crackling. I've tried to remove as much as I possibly can until I can figure out what the issue is. Without further ado, International Podcast. Thanks for watching. Bedroom. No, no, no. You're doing this wrong. It only looks like you made it yourself. Yeah, it's yeah. actually CGI. It and really costs effects. serious money. Wow. <laughs> then, then it's uh, then it's the the worst <laughs> fucking creation ever. Whoever made this deserves to be killed. Because, damn, it's certainly not the pyramids. What's <laughs> up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and I'm here with Reg Silver, Go Burns, and Tarmac, our guests for today, and we are doing the international podcast. Well. We hope we're doing the international podcast. Everything seemed to record, right? Who fucking knows? Who cares? <laughs> uh, we've got a ton of stuff to talk about. Obviously, there's a couple small games that have been released. There's some issues with YouTube. There's some stuff with uh, uh, companies creating offshoot games that I want to talk about. We put all those in a little list, and we're going to get started. I want to say thanks to all the patrons who continually show up, as, uh, assuming we'll post these when, when I never do. That's what I got. Oh. I got somebody saying... I, yeah, make sure you upload this. I'm like, if that was the only issue, if uploading yeah. it was like all that stopped it. But uh, I am working on fixing it. We, I did find a huge technical disaster for people who do follow the podcast. I found a huge technical problem on my side, which was a hard drive that wasn't reporting issues in its software at all. But then in the last couple of days, I've noticed it's the one we saved. I don't anymore. Saved the, the movies to that we filmed spinning rust man spinning rust yeah and it was slowly going bad so ouch speaking yeah. of spinning rust i want to thank tarmac for coming on he's been mentioned multiple times by people like uh, tb and uh, jim sterling which could be a positive or a negative depending on how you take it <laughs> that's true that's true thank you very much for having me yeah it's been a blast we've talked about it a ton of times we've, we we're trying to get his channel into uh he does this on the side and trying to sort of help him get his channel going Got some stuff figured out on tags, apparently, which was nice. Mm -hmm. And yes, that went very well. I, I, I am uh, very appreciative of of your suggestions. No problem. Went very well. And I'm appreciative of whoever told me. Oh yeah, that was Cadiz's parents <laughs> of all things who <laughs> who run who do some uh, SEO. So we've got him on the channel. And uh, why don't you go ahead and pimp your channel for a second? What do you do? Uh, why is it that Jim and TB have talked about your videos and so forth? Fair enough. Um, I'm I'm kind of an industry enthusiast. You know, I love games. I love playing games and all that kind of stuff. But I also love talking about how the companies work, how they do what they do, how they monetize things, what they're the uh, the the ways that they kind of get away with with some of these different bits and pieces. I've talked about loot boxes in relation to gambling legislation. I've talked about the you know Trans Pacific Partnership Agreement, net neutrality, all of that kind of stuff, and how it affects games and gamers and and whatnot. Um, so I, I do a couple of different series. I do a news wrap up every week of the big things that have happened. Uh, I do a series called Feature Creep, which is basically a you know a ten minute editorial on something could be anything, um, and a little bit of reviews and things along that lines uh, on the side. Yeah, loads of fun. It is, and they're actually very good. As you guys know, I wouldn't have somebody Absolutely on the I, I wouldn't have somebody on the podcast who uh, who wasn't. I would just come up with excuses. What was funny though. <laughs> Was that a couple of weeks ago? About, it, might, it was probably two weeks now where somebody's like, hey, man, did you guys check out that Tarmac video? Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, dude, he's a patron. He's like literally green in our, <laughs> like, like, look to your right at that big long list of people. Um, and then Go Burns, of course, as everybody knows, runs a channel. What are you showing right now, Go? I think you're doing L.A. Noir, right? Oh, yes. L.A. Noir. I never played L.A. Noir when it first came out, so I'm really glad that I'm able oh, to do it now. gotcha. And I underestimated how in depth it is when it comes to doing all the detective stuff right. and i was getting my ass handed to me by the chief <laughs> early on get me some lumps, like, get boy me. get me some lumps <laughs> exactly and because i used to love detective stories and shows and i was just like amazed about how the setting is you know 1940s the cars the music so yeah it's it's a beautiful game even if it is a few years old yeah it's maybe not technically a remaster per se I definitely think on top of the, the DLC being added as well to uh, this uh, version of Ellie Noir for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, let's see, Switch, and uh, what Vibe in uh, December, I, I definitely think it's worth the $40, and I'm really enjoying it. And I'm going to hopefully wrap it up Saturday. So, Gotcha. <laughs> I'm, I'm stoked to hear somebody who hasn't played it because 
I yeah. feel that it's as good as I feel it's almost as good as Bully in that it's not an open world game, but like Rockstar, it looks like a test game for them almost. Where they're like, mm -hmm. well, it's not going to be fully open world. I mean, you can drive around, but not a ton of stuff will happen. But at the same time, driving around becomes the fun. And like the world mm -hmm. is super exploratory. And then when you jump in the story, fuck, that story is really different than every other thing Rockstar does. Aside from Bully, I felt that there was some yeah. connections. It's it's a lot like the first Mafia game in that it uses op its open world not as a gameplay mechanic, but as a setting. Like yeah. Set pressing. Or in a weird way, a story way. mechanic. Like it's, yeah. It, yeah. for example, when you... I don't know if he's got this far. I'm sure he probably has, but like you investigate the uh, the the murder up in the, in the car up in the hills, and yeah. you're just like it, everything about it and where it puts its set pieces and where things matter. It, it, there's something about it that just works, and it does. It reminds me of Bully, which was like, yeah, you're in school and it's somewhat open world. You can go around, but there isn't a thousand different things to do. And mm -hmm. instead, it's it's a little bit more about the story. So that's cool that you're doing that. Are you doing any other games, G? Or just uh, I think uh, coming up on Tuesday, I'll uh, also live stream episode three of Batman. That's finally coming out. Yeah. We'll talk more about Tell's Health later. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, and then Silver has a channel, but he uploads yeah. periodically. Have you uploaded anything <laughs> recently? Yeah, I've um, uploaded. Um, I've started a Let's Play of um, Total War Warhammer 2. I did it for Halloween as um, Fun Kostein, the Vampire Lords, mm -hmm. um, just for nice. fun. Yeah. Um, I am also starting a let's play of uh, Assassin's Creed Origins on hard uh, without a HUD to show people how that plays um, and how yeah. that looks. So if you want to check that out, you're welcome. I would that say, that. oh, go ahead. Total War, are you using like a Transylvanian accent? Yeah. <laughs> I knew it. Good evening and welcome. <laughs> the, the thing I like about Silver is he's, he's pure, he's pure B-level high school theater and he has no problem with it. <laughs> And I have, I, I could not do that. And that, and that's, I, I fucking, there's nothing but bravery and a solid pair of cast iron balls for somebody to do that. And it, he's not doing anything crazy, but the idea of doing that accent cracks me the fuck up. So yeah, if you guys get a chance, if you guys get a chance to watch that, yeah. I would certainly do so. Um, <laughs> you were talking about, let's see, Silver, I wanted to say something about the games that you, you uh, shoot. You were talking about... Warhammer. What was the other one? Um, Assassin's, Assassin's Creed Origins. Yeah. So, so the No HUD, as everybody knows, like I'm a huge fan of No HUD, and I'm gonna tell you, I think that game isn't even designed well to do No HUD. So you got your, you have your work fucking yeah. cut over you. Yeah. Like, I know. It's the first game I can remember where the guy, not, not, it's never happened. It, it has happened before, but this, but Origins does this all the time, where the guy that you need to give the quest to just ups and goes somewhere else. And so yeah. the idea of trying to find that son of a bitch when they all look the same because it's a video game, they don't make them shiny special kid if they're the a mission giver. They can look like anybody. So you got some Not only that, but balls, yeah, there are some of the side quests where you have to go find a treasure underneath a rock pebble in like the middle of the lake. Uh, you have to go find. <laughs> so good luck. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, you know, yeah. primal worked because i think they did a better no hud they ha remember the options in primal it was just tons yeah, of options there were far more and yeah. uh, origins is like no hud some hud all the hud and you're all fuck yeah. man that's not gonna work for me so all yeah, right you can't tailor it unfortunately yeah you can't but yeah so you guys should check that out if you're interested in no hud gameplay it's a blast so the first mm -hmm. thing we're going to talk about when it comes to news is star wars battlefront 2 so oh, Lord. reviews came out, um, <laughs> some reviews, the weird thing about this game is how many different types of review there are. There's reviews from the review event. Those people had a different hero percentage than the rest of us, which were reviews based on the deluxe version. And now they've changed the numbers. Well, they changed the numbers again, and then they removed all microtransactions. So I guess we'll frame this around who has played Star Wars Battlefront 2 right now. Raise your hands. Besi oh, Jesus, just me? No, no, I didn't. Oh, Reg, that. too. Oh, sorry, Reg, your face is covered up in the uh, camera here. Let's move that. Okay, so let's go with Reg. What do you, ignoring the microtransactions just for a moment, what do you think of, of Battlefront 2? Um, I, I walked around all the plot holes in the campaign, but otherwise I enjoyed it, actually. In my, it was very short, but I liked what was there. The, the campaign? Yeah, yeah I, okay. I had my fun with it. And uh, any multiplayer? And 
Uh, multiplayer, but only the Starfighter Assault. I didn't play anything else. Okay. What were we going to say, Go? Yeah, I did the uh, demo a while back, but that's not the same as, you know, now. So No, but, but I mean, if it, was it yeah. the EA Access demo? Uh, it was the the one that they did for open beta oh, a I few see. about a month ago. But yeah. yeah, regarding the campaign, I mean, it's it's uh, canon, so everything that happens in canon ties into the rest of the Star Wars universe. But it is a shame that it was so short and the deceptive marketing. Because I watched, obviously, I had to go watch it, uh, and oh. it was very deceptive how they how they presented the the story, what it was going to be, and what it turned out actually. And some people might be like, "Well, that's kind of good, you know, that they didn't spoil how it was going to play out." I'm not trying to spoil it, by the way, but. It should have been longer, and it felt like a lot of the the stuff was just cookie cutter together. Like this was cut together with this and this. It it didn't feel very linear, you right. know. It just felt jumbled well, together. It 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 was basically a tutorial for the multiplayer. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Really. <laughs> what really bothered me, or I wouldn't even say bothered me as much as just sort of disappointed me, was the jumping off. You get this character that they try to tell you is going to be really interesting, and your other people a lot, at least a third of the game. And so it's yep. just like, okay, it, whether, you know, this person does a certain thing through the entire game or changes their ideas or whatever, the fact is, is that it doesn't matter too much because you keep switching. I will also say this, the one scene with Luke, and this isn't a spoiler, but with Luke and Dell on the planet, um, the force planet with the weird honey shit in the, in the caves, they the did corals. a, yeah, they did a better job in that one level with explaining somebody fighting their the mentality of who they work for than the all the other episodes combined i was sitting there going holy shit this one episode did a better job like making me feel for this character who was questioning what was going on than any of the other stuff and mm -hmm. when people play it it'll be interesting because i don't think it's so funny the person says it multiple times and they indicate it in the story but a lot of people didn't know the relationship between the commander and the main character you play I'm sure if you if you play the campaign, you know the connection because how, she says it. How can you? Yeah, exactly. How can you not? He, here's know why. It? I asked somebody that this morning, and they said because they made so little of it, and because the the decisions that are made, even when things happen, don't seem to matter at all. So they their brain just wasn't picking up on that connection. They were like, obviously, it doesn't matter. It's almost like two people who didn't know each other at all. <laughs> and they were obviously we should have. So it was odd. Um, overall, though, the shooting it was sound, pretty good. It sounds a lot like uh, the campaign for Battlefield 1. It's not. Exactly. It, 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 I don't think it is. I, I, I think the ba I mean, I can see why it would sound like that. And they do jump around, but they don't do that shit where it's like, you know, right, Joe okay. Bob 1942 or whatever. And they, you know. It's Han that you are, so so you do jump around, but it's more like it's it you know Lando Calrissian, Leia, that kind of stuff. And you, so I don't, I mean, I guess you could say it is. It's more like Titanfall, you know, except not as good, by the way, um, <laughs> as, as a single player uh, title. But yeah, it's odd. What uh, Reg, when you were playing it, you played a little bit of Starfighter. Would you? How'd you think they controlled and how that played? Well, Starfighter, I enjoyed a lot. That's mm -hmm. why I didn't even touch anything else. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah, I, I too preferred the Starfighter over getting wrecked in like the shooter mode. Yeah. Yeah, I I played the, that shooter mode in like the beta they had, and as mm -hmm. soon as like a hero character appears, everyone else is having a bad time anyway. Yeah. <laughs> get murdered <laughs> i do like the fact that they blew up the arcade mode to a bigger amount so you can you know you can jump in there with bots if you want to and sort of try out some of those heroes because there's the onslaught mode which is a blast all that is is a jedi well a hero going against hundreds of bad guys you can even <laughs> up and you can say i want to go against just 25 bad guys and you have to do it in a certain time or you can go against 150 and that was sort of fun but to me the ai just wasn't very good at all i had the ai on hardest like literally leap over a box and wait on my side and they're a bad guy and i'm looking at their back going dude seriously i'm not going to take you <laughs> on my side what the fuck is happening i shot him of course but i was like why are they why are they on my side so you have these really weird ai moments i mean i get that people say it's for the multiplayer it's totally fine then don't spend even a single cent in your pr pretending it's not which is what they did and yep. so we need to start getting yep. this thing where it's a little bit more like yeah, it's single player and we're working on that and we're actually going to have it be, you know, a big yeah. thing with good AI. You can't just and, throw it together. Yeah. The single player was the main push at EA. I mean, they did yeah, this true. whole presentation with the actress and 
and all this. Yeah. Stuff. Oh, at E3, you mean? Not EA, yeah. but at E3. Yeah, E3. Yeah. EA at E3. Yes. yes. Yeah, you're That's you're right. absolutely right. Yeah, they did. Well, and that was that was the big disappointment from Battlefront One. Well, Battlefront uh, 2015, right? Was not <laughs> right. having that single player that turned so many people off of because they everybody wants to play a Star Wars game. We we all look yeah. back at these great games we played in the past, and they didn't have that. It it kind of made it sound like they're just doing it as a tease or as a way to bring people into the multiplayer, not because they really wanted to make a single player version of it. Yeah, and yep. the ending. I said DLC. I actually just meant star <laughs> cards. But at the ending, I said, you know, if there's ever an ending that says, hey, you know, co go out and buy our stuff because we're doing something, you know, like this is not the end. It's that game. Uh, it it certainly is. Uh, oh, it was more like this is the end. And then or is it? Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. Or is it? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it becomes yeah. like it, it's almost like a stinger at the end of a Marvel movie. You're just wait. You're like this. It should just be at the end of the movie now. It happens in every one. Those used to be like a really cool moment at the end of a Marvel movie where it would occasionally happen or at the end of a movie. And now it's like every movie you guaranteed know there's going to be a, not one, but maybe two or three little blurbs. And that's the way uh -huh. the way Star Wars sort of pulled it out. But yeah, um, I, and now let's talk about the microtransactions. So they, they removed them completely. Let's just go around the board. We'll start with Reg. Why do you think they removed them completely? And do you think it makes a, a difference? What are your thoughts on it overall? They removed them because uh, the publicity was uh, so bad that apparently even Disney got involved and called them up. They did. Two-hour telephone uh, call. <laughs> Dad's on the yeah. phone, right? <laughs> like, and that's pretty yep. much the, the only reason. Yeah. Hmm. Um, did you buy anything? It, but uh, in game, no, no, never, 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 okay. never in a title that costs anything. I only do that for free-to-play stuff. Understood. What about you, Silver? What do you think overall? The thoughts of them removing them? I think it's. I mean, it. I like it. I like that they did that. I mean, it's it's sort of indicative of what Ubisoft did with For Honor, when uh, oh, the For Honor community yeah. uh, outlet had an outlash for um, for the grinding rate of For Honor. They adjusted that. Um, they didn't remove the microtransactions. They, they didn't go that far. But um, I think it's good to see them actually listen to the community and react to the criticism, and yeah. uh, and the reception. Yeah, in right. that way. I am. I mean, the only thing that amuses me is that it always seems like EA is everyone's favorite whipping boy, um, which sort of always amuses me. Um, but that's about it. Yeah. What about you, GB? Well, I agree with Silver on that. I mean, all the other publishers are, are just as guilty. I mean, like Take Two, they're pushing for more mic microtransactions as well in their game. So, unfortunately, this is a problem throughout the entire industry. But back to EA, I feel like that this is a strategic maneuver, and they already mentioned that they're going to bring back the microtransactions. Yeah. I think it ties into the movie. I think that because they want to build up a lot of hype for Last Jedi, which is coming in December, they want to stay on the, the fans' good side. Mm. Okay. And once the, once the film comes out and it makes enough money, then magically you're going to see uh, the microtransactions return, probably in, I would say, January, you know. <coughs> Because, you know, they don't want to tick off the, the, the fan base because everyone that's playing the game is probably going to go watch the movie and everyone else included. So right. it's all about PR and strategy. What about you, Tormek? Uh, it's a good move. Uh, it's debatable whether it can be trusted. I mean, they yeah, again, they did say that, that, that it's coming back. All of this, it comes down to, uh, you know, gamers online have a certain amount of, of influence and power, right? We, we talk about these things. We make a big deal out of it. The reason yeah. this one happened is because it hit the news. Uh, it was a big enough deal on Reddit that they had, you know, the most downvoted post of all time by several times over. Uh, you know, my my mother watches my stuff because she loves keeping an eye on me, and she sent me a link from CTV News in in Canada, right? That this was a big thing. As soon as it hits the mainstream media, right? Disney yeah. will see it and they'll get involved and they'll shut it. I mean, they they have microtransactions in other Disney games that they don't care about. Yeah. So oh, yeah. it's not a oh, yeah. it's not a moral <laughs> thing. It's just this one was a big enough stink for them to, you know, to take to action on about it. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, I'll frame this conversation with saying, or my my answer was saying, I adore the idea of longer unlocks, and that those can be separate from grind. And I'll get into that in a second. I do like the idea of For Honor saying we don't want you to get everything. If you do it right, I like that because there is added content. The problem is, is that the grind replaces it. And that's not necessarily what I'm saying. I, I'm saying I like longer, more like more content. Um, 
versus grind. But for me, it's sort of ce like celebrating that you don't have gangrene because you chopped off your leg kind of thing. So it's like, okay, we don't have microtransactions, but we did. And I said in my review, and I firmly believe this, and I've worked test, other people have worked test, other people have been developers and they've agreed. You can't program yourself into that corner and then sit there on every interview and say, all of our systems are so fucking complex and everything talks to itself <laughs> and all of this balancing has been done. Fuck balancing. We just yeah. removed all micro. That's it. Guys, it does not. Fu and I don't mean guys here. They all know this, but it doesn't work. That does not work. It doesn't work. If any gamer has ever or any person on any podcast has ever done polish up work. If you've ever done testing and if you're a gamer who's done balance on a beta, there's a reason why they're called balance betas. There's a reason why you fucking do it. And you can't just remove all microtransaction and say, yo, dog, we're good. And then walk off like that. It mm. fucking doesn't work. And that's what worries me is that it's it's like we're going to do it the day before it launched. So they released it. And yes, there was a telephone call between the CEOs. Disney CEO called just like. You know, you're in trouble. You moved out, but you still do shit. Your parents are still like, we're watching you, Sonny. And they called him yeah, up. In the and principal's we're, office. Oh, dude, yeah. And you're like, I live on my own. I can do what I want. And Disney's all, no, you fucking can't at all. And <laughs> and remember, Disney, I mean, in a way, that is sort of like celebrating that the dic dictator called you because they're, they're terrible. It's not like, oh, yeah. if you're getting a call from a shit-ass person from Disney telling you you've gone too far, that's when you sit back and go, maybe I shouldn't be in gaming anymore. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, a, that's a fucking problem. Um, so it'll be interesting to see who changes what and how the reviews go out. I personally had a ton of issues in other places, everything from the balance. I thought the shooting was okay, but it was one of the most up-and-down experiences I've had in a long time, where one level I really... I liked all the levels, but what I mean is the gameplay. There were times where I was like, yeah, this really works and the, in multiplayer, by the way. And then other times, and I didn't buy anything until right at the end. And then other times where I was like, this doesn't work at all. And so I have issues in a lot of other places. Also, the voice acting. It was one of the weirdest moments where it was like, sometimes somebody would sound like their movie star. I'm pretty sure Han Solo, or I'm sorry, um, Lando. I'm pretty sure they got what's his name to do Lando. Yeah, Billy D. Williams. It did, yeah. He did the original game. And yeah. it sounds like him, and it's not to be rude, but it sounds a little like Earl jo Earl Jones now because he's older. Their voices sound different. So when they try to mm -hmm. be Vader, you're like, it's for sure him, but something's odd. Yeah, he's a hundred and fucking eighty two years old is what's odd. Uh, Billy D. Williams, Billy Dean, Billy Billy D. Which one is yeah, it? D. Yeah, D. Yeah, it sounds like him. Leia's, of course, isn't her and doesn't sound very good at all. That was that was bad. No. Um, I like the main commander's voice. He was good. I got a question. Was the main commander, the person, the main bad guy who played a con who was connected to the character you played? Gideon, is, yeah. Is that actor the same guy who played in X-Men Origins um, Striker? He's been he's he's been in a couple. No, movies. he's in he's an arrow. He plays. Uh, he played uh, Laurel's dad and wait, the detective. No way. That's that's Blackthorn. Yeah. Who? Oh, fuck. That's awesome. I love that guy. Uh, Dres was it Dresden Files? He's he did a great the TV show. Actor. Yeah, he's yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, the the voice, the face of that guy looks like the dude from um, X Men Origins who played Striker. So that's who I thought it was. So uh, he did good, which is what I was saying. And then um, and then a, a couple other things, but or a couple other people. But yeah, overall, I have a feeling um, they've burned enough people, right? Like a lot of people are just going to be. I had a bunch of people on the post just going, "I don't care. They could give the way game or give the game away for free. They've already shown how far they'll go." I think Reg sort of mentioned that in the Discord. It's like it was a test. It's like how yeah. far how how far can we put the thumb screws in? They, 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 they might might have rolled it back for now, but yeah, they, they've shown their cards, their intentions. Yeah, at right. least the next step of their intention is not even the end game. So I think we can end this discussion with a question to you guys. Um, it is weird that pay F for respect kind of Call of Duty has fucking loot craze fall in front of your face. And yet the outrage is nowhere near as much. And I sort of want to know your guys' thoughts on why. And since Tarmac ended, he starts. What are your thoughts okay. on why like that is not as noticeable or is not as bothersome to fans as uh, Star Wars was? It's it's primarily the difference between affecting gameplay and cosmetic. Um, and that's the thing that's going on in COD right now is that it doesn't affect gameplay, whereas Battlefront did. Uh, and there's a huge contingent of people online that that say that that's 
what really causes the problem. As soon as it affects gameplay, you've got the pay to win side, right? I mean, it, it doesn't mean that you're going to be able to pay to be the best, but you do have an advantage over somebody else by simply having money. Um, I take a bit more of an issue with the loot box psychological nonsense. Um, but uh, so, I mean, it, COD is getting some heat, but just, I mean, this week there, there's no competing with Battlefront, yeah. right? Yeah, you know what? Nobody's getting it. You know what, though, Tarmac? Right now, the people of fucking Activision are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like when exactly. you're at work and one person gets in trouble and not you, and you're like, yeah, they're in trouble. All of the focus is on them, and I'm going to go over here. I'm going to fuck everything yep. up. And it, it, it seems like they are. What about you, GB? What are your thoughts on yeah. Call of Duty? I agree with Tarmac and you. I mean, I think that it's just a smaller fish right now. I mean, they're doing some questionable things, you know, and... You know, right now, because EA is doing more questionable things and they're <laughs> bigger then you know, they're able to like, you know, catch less of the flack, you know, using our World War II terminology. It's like like EA is the big bomber and they're a smaller bomber. And while they're getting focused on by the AA guns, they're able to fly by like, ha, ha, ha. And still do damage. <laughs> yep. exactly. Yeah, I got you. What about you, Silver? I think just historically, EA has been sort of. Whipping just boy. whipping boy of gamers. Um, like you look back to when it was well, like consecutively, it was voted the worst company in America, right? As yeah, I recall. True. Um, yeah. yeah, it was. Well, which it is, still is. Which oh. is blatantly absurd. But I mean, it's yeah. It just for some reason it seems to strike a particular chord with gamers. Maybe it's because it's the biggest publisher, I think, in the industry. Um, mm. Maybe that's why. Uh, but yeah, it just seems. To target EA specifically. Yeah, if you guys want to know what a shitty company is, I don't think they're based... They have a base in America, but they're not based here as Foxcom. Whenever you're putting suicide nets around your building because people are leaping to their death, you you have a bad company. <laughs> like, I don't know how they... Yeah. They're like, nah, suicides happen, man. We just happen to have all of them happen here. <laughs> and, and not, not, not just that. You know, when, it, when a door lock on the roof access is not enough to keep the people from getting up right. there to jump, I mean... <laughs> If they're chewing through the door lock, <laughs> yeah. then then you know something's up. What about you, so Reg, bad. when it comes to like Activision and EA? Why do you think we don't hear much about Activision, at least right now? Is it is it just because it's a big thing? Or do you think it's not as noticeable? I, I think because Battlefront this year at least had more attention on it mm -hmm. anyway, because uh, Star Wars seems to be a lot more popular yeah. than uh, Call of Duty. At least a lot of more people talk about Star Wars than they do of the current COD. Right. Because usually it ends like, hot COD, you're playing COD, boo. And that's the end of the discussion. True. Uh, and yeah, I also, think... I, also, I think Activision currently has a lot of other problems with COD. Like mm. that you're still pretty much alone in the HQ, that the servers are broken. And they did get some flag about the whole... Um, Dropping from the sky yeah. thing and even even having tasks, uh, objectives of watching others opening boxes. <laughs> I mean, you get your own box for watching yeah. other free openings. Uh, this crazy shit like yeah. that. And um, on the beaches of Normandy, no less. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. four hundred thousand plus people <laughs> lost their lives. So after the battle's over, let's watch some loot boxes get open. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ, that's painful to even. Yeah, that that's painful. GB, it sounded like you were wanting to add something. I uh, yeah. Uh, what was I gonna say? I don't remember. Okay. Um, so, yeah, Reg, the, the one thing that Reg was saying is like, you know, they did get some heat, and they did, for sure. Yeah. But it is, I, I, like I had told you guys, but, go ahead. Yeah, and also the, the main battlefront, the next big target just came along. Yeah. Yeah. They, they threw yeah. all the heat onto them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's what I was going to say. Go for it. Yeah, because it's Star Wars, that's, that's more like an eye catch or more of a focus than, say, going up against, say, a, a new Battlefield uh, game as opposed to Star, Star Wars Battlefront. So if it was Battlefield, like, 1940 versus COD, World War II, it'd probably be 50-50 right now. That's a good point. Um, so what I, all I was going to say is that when you look at all these and you look at, like, who gets hit and how long they get hit, even though I think EA at some times, you know, there's, there's a couple people that, are, you know, may look at it and sort of do a video just because they want to cause an issue. You know, like the, the issue isn't as bad as maybe they make out. I think these are so like this is the first time where I've been playing a game because uh, I can play COD and not feel like these headsets are fucked up, not feel like everything's going wrong and that I need to buy something. But but what, when you're playing Star Wars, there's times where 
no lie we were looking so star cards you know do more damage uh you, you can get like a grenade let's say that does 20 20 more damage and i'm I'm just faking the numbers because i'm just talking out loud here 20 percent more 40 percent more or let's say 80 percent more but as a game developer and or, or sorry as someone who knows game developers and have talked to them you can actually tell that some of the maps are set up so that a person who has a three star card grenade will do damage in an area regardless of where they throw it and a two star and a one star like star card level star card will not and i i think that making the levels based around those doesn't actually work so well i think humans are better when things are a little like there's a little anarchy in your level design things aren't fucking just and i talked about this in overwatch where i felt it was almost too polished and i was wrong obviously because everybody everybody seems to love it <laughs> but there it wasn't even this bad where it feels like places are made for star cards and I mean that, where you almost feel like it's like, oh, this is a place. Instead of saying, right. Reg calls me up or, or gets a hold of me on Skype and says, dude, I figured this thing out. It's not like that. It's where everybody can figure it out because it's made for that. And I'm not 100% sure that's the way to go. I could be wrong, but it feels weird to me the entire time well, I'm it's playing. It's free-to-play it. mechanics made into a, a full-price game. I True. mean, those are the mechanics you see in Planet Side and World of Tanks and so on. Games I, of that I, um, I do want to say, uh, let's use his username, Hadron, who's leaked a bunch of stuff to me. I want to say thanks because he leaked this and I put it on Maddie's server. It's like, there's a rumor, but I didn't, I was like, I didn't believe it, to be honest. EA dropping all microtransactions. I was like, not going to happen. And he was like, no, no, no. Not only has it, is it happened, but it should have, the announcement should have got gone out sooner. And I was like. He's been right about Primal and about all the other stuff, and I was like, yeah, I don't know, man. EA dropping. It just didn't sound real. I mean, I even <laughs> saw somebody post it on Twitter. They're like, dude, EA dropped microtransactions. I'm like, fuck you. You're just trying to cause an issue. <laughs> I didn't say that, but I was like, no way. And then, and then they did, and you're like, way. It's one of those times, too, where it's going to change up like how we feel about coverage on games, too, which could be a problem. You know, I mean, are they going to do that continually so that reviews, they can just call into question reviews, which is something we've talked about prior. It's, it's hopefully we don't yeah. see this, but I, I'm, I'm curious to see if Metacritic's ever going to change their, their method and, and allow oh. people to go back and make those changes to reviews because I mean, removing the microtransactions is one of the big problems people have with it. Right. Yeah, so it's, right. it probably yeah. dropped 10, 15 points just because of that. And some gamers don't care about scores. But the majority do. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, for sure. Could affect things. So moving on from Star Wars Battlefront, I hope everybody who likes it is having a good time. Uh, I may hate yeah. something, but don't for a second think I want you to go like, man, it's fucking suck. That that sucks, man. 60 bucks is a lot of money. So if you're out there and you bought that and you're having a good time, man, all the power to you. I'm really happy for you because uh, like yeah. the idea of people spending money and not enjoying. I mean, it's hard. It's hard enough to get it let alone to buy something and be, I mean, buyer's remorse, it ranks right up there with like, <laughs> if you had a sexual dysfunction or something hor like it's horrible. The I, buyer's remorse is so painful in my gut that like it, it bought, when I have it, it bothers me for days. I'll just be like, I spent, you know, money on this. It's why I use Amazon, even yeah. though I hate them because they have such a good return policy, you know, mm -hmm. yep. Costco, Costco, as I look over at my PS <laughs> PSVR that doesn't work. Um, so moving on, let's talk, <laughs> let's talk about, uh, let's talk about items that'll most likely get returned due to high failure rates. And that's the Xbox X. And I'm just joking. So it, I, I haven't heard anything about that. I got it. Reg got it. GB got it. Let's start with GB. What are your initial thoughts on the Xbox X? I like it so far. I really wish that it had more than a terabyte of memory because I can foresee that going very quickly. But the good news is, I mean, to buy a pretty decent external hard drive is not that expensive these days. I mean, even just for like a terabyte or like more. Mm -hmm. So that's not really a problem. But overall, I mean, I really haven't had a chance to like, you know, test it like hardcore because I don't have a 4K TV. But like with uh, Mafia 3, for example, because they did a patch update, you know, mm, improving no. some things. I noticed whenever I uh, went back and I played it, just driving around New Bordeaux in the swamp, that there was definitely graphical improvements for the Xbox One X version of Mafia 3 as opposed to the regular Xbox One version. Gotcha. It didn't really translate over on YouTube, unfortunately, but there was differences. Not over-the-top crazy wild differences, but 
it did look better. It looked a lot cleaner. It looked a lot less. Uh, things were just popping left and right. You know, it looked smoother. Very cool. So, so I can't wait to see more of that done on the uh, current Xbox One games that, that I have and others have. Hopefully the developers will be doing that right now and getting those out because I really do think that it's going to be a fantastic uh, system. I think it's a, hopefully a long-term investment. You know, Maybe the next three, five years, this is going to be the flagship system that Microsoft is going to go with. And if they do, then I think it'll be worth the price. But hopefully, uh, I guess that depends on Sony and what they're working on. Yeah, right. What about you, Reg? What do you think of it so far? I, I'm mainly on board with the too little memory mm -hmm. uh, because my, my previous Xbox had a two terabyte internal drive. So before the, the X uh, came to my place, I was going through the game list and actually deleting games to make it small enough mm -hmm. yeah. to transfer over. Only to then afterwards find that I actually had an external drive lying around that I didn't use. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Too bad. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, apart from that, yeah, it, it does pretty much what I expected. Uh, the games that, that are uh, that got patched for it uh, look better or run better in the case of Gears, where you luckily have the option of choosing what you want, uh, Gears of War 4. Um, although the performance mode, while, while it runs at 60, didn't look that great. Like, it could look a bit better for that performance, I think. Uh, yeah, apart from that... Really, I don't think there's too much to say. Uh, it, it, I also finally figured out that that doesn't really depend on the X, but why my image was so blurry on my monitor. Why is that? <laughs> because it was automatically switching down to 720p as soon as my <laughs> capture card was connected. Oh, God. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wow. playing the switch. What's what's happening here? Um, yeah, <laughs> but what what I I also noticed what is very uh, very good user experience i think is that the loading times for everything are much decreased yes yes just I just agree. for the system menu the shop etc itself not just games everything's just much faster yeah mm -hmm. i will say this you know as a uh, i i like the pro because it does allow for that higher resolution on some games a ps4 pro but it doesn't really show extras in many other places and the x is the first time like you turn it on loading's faster downloading in uh, uh uncompressing checking your files is faster loading in games sims 4 is night and day between the x and the original s like night and fucking day for loading and uh, also it's the first time i've ever played a sims game because i was playing sims 4 last night and it's the only time i've ever played a sims game on the console which they've had a lot of releases in the past or even yeah. even a big world game like um, Reg and I both like uh, what is that cities? It wasn't. C I don't think we both played City Skylines. It is it Skylines. Was, okay, yeah, but... and it had some FPS issues, and those are gone. Like it's playing Sims is smooth as fuck on the con smooth enough that even my PC sometimes I'm like mm, maybe I'll just play it now on the Xbox um, X. And I think that that's one of the things they did well is the speed of the CPU is a little faster. And you do get some things that are a little bit better that aren't just resolution. You know, there there are some hmm. there are some big big updates. You can, you can get better load times too by putting an SSD in it too, from what I understand. A, a, uh, a small amount, but the, the problem is, is that Xbox uses a compression, and that compression uses the CPU, and right, so right. it uh, the X will be much faster purely due to the compression. Because I I, I had faster hard drives on mine, and the difference is not is is like Reg said, it's night and day. I mean, it's yeah. it's insane on the X. How That's fast? Really good news. Yeah, I I I'm really happy I got the Pro. Uh, it's loud and sort of ugly, but it it does better resolution and all that stuff. But man, the X has been impressive as fuck. So it's it's cool. It's cool that Microsoft did it. Um, and I, Some, something I also enjoy on the Xbox, not just the X, is uh, the Atmos for headphones. Yeah. Insane, isn't it? I mean, it? That, that's a little bit extra cost. I think like 15 buck licensing fee. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. If, I mean. if you can, you should try Atmos, <laughs> by the way. Uh, what, what it does is even in headphones, but in, in home theaters, if you have it for PC and you have a game that supports it or a movie, it's that vertical sound. And it were in some games, mm -hmm. like you can hear that going like zoom, above you. And it sounds so stupid to matter. But well, I'm going to talk about a game that doesn't have the best surround sound here in a second. The difference between the two between that discrete stuff that goes on in Atmos and and normal, you know, stereo or stereo, you know, four channel, whatever, is actually pretty big. Mm. Yeah, I would say I'm happy too. Uh, anybody want to add anything about the X before we move on? Other I was than surprised I wish it was how heavy it was. 
Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's also smaller because I did a side-by-side -side comparison yeah. uh, between it and the Xbox One, the original. And it's like, even though it's heavy, it's still smaller. So And it's quiet. Yeah, and That's what I it really is. like about it. Yeah, yeah. I, I was I was picking it out of the package. It was very heavy. Then the little vertical stand on it that's connected by a little like this much plastic. It's like for this heavy piece. That okay. ain't gonna last. <laughs> well, no, no, I, I I keep it like I keep it flat. I'm oh. gonna make it vertical. No way. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I've always I've always been a fan of keeping them flat. But that's because I still remember when the 360 was scratching discs. If you'd put them mm. horizontal or vertical and you put the disc in, sometimes the I, disc would yeah. slide down. Oh. I, I simply have no space to put it down flat. I, I, I do vertical as well on this one. Um, And I do have to admit, man, when I'm playing the pro, some games are like, and it, it sounds yes. like you're sitting next to a hairdryer. And mm, yeah. to, to play the X, I was like, oh, shit, it sounds stupid. What a small thing to bitch about but the reason why it's nice is because you then notice the absence of sound <laughs> it's it, yeah. Is, yeah. it is huge yeah you it, can finally watch netflix on it without <laughs> hearing the console yeah exactly. yeah <laughs> were there airplanes in this old world war ii movie i'm or <laughs> world war one movie i'm watching yeah it, it was pretty crazy to see the difference in that uh, the difference in loading um i definitely don't know do the s controllers work on the x yeah okay great so yeah that's cool, man. Yeah, so far it's been so far it's been excellent. Um, moving on, let's talk a little bit about Skyrim VR and Skyrim Switch. So, I played both. Has anybody played either one of these? Okay, all right. So then we'll go very short, so I don't waste anybody's time. Um, Skyrim Switch is my favorite version of Skyrim now, for sure. Like hands down. I, um, I did not expect. I just don't even know what I expected, I guess. It, it, the idea to be able to sit on the shitter I joked around about in Doom, uh, it, it doesn't matter to me. I don't care about sitting on the shitter and playing a game. I'm only in there for one minute. The rest of you guys, I don't know how. Yeah. I don't know if you need yeah. some fucking calcium or whatever. But <laughs> um, Here's the thing. It works, man. And it's controlled. Doom had issues with control because, you know, I had some frame rate drops and so forth. And it's a game that requires speed. Skyrim, mm -hmm. not so much. And... Uh, it was so weird to go into white run on a portable and because the smaller screen hides the the graph you know they have to it's it's a low graphics version of the pc version but i was sitting there going holy shit now i can see this is my game some people mario may be their game or zelda that makes them go fuck this is awesome but for me playing that on the switch and having it just work whether it was docked or not was it was glorious, and I get it. Somebody said, "How dare you review a six-year-old game?" Sorry, dude. Came out two days ago, <laughs> so fuck off. Uh, I get yeah, what you're trying to say, stupid. but that's a stupid thing to say. Um, you don't magically pretend that the new titles aren't coming out and asking for your money. The one yeah. thing I will say, though, sixty bucks. So mm. Bethesda has never found something they don't want to release. Fucking Skyrim on that was my joke. There's going to be a printer version of the fucking thing if they continue. But it is weird that VR Skyrim is full price and Skyrim Switch is full price. It would be nice to see them at 30 I think. Yeah. I, I got my 60 bucks out of it. I'm just saying it, it, is, yeah. it is ancient now. And you, you guys are swimming in cash. I mean, they're, they, fucking, they don't even have like cash in a bank vault. They just have a bunch of fucking bank vaults now. It's like I, at some point you can give gamers a break, right? Yeah. I, I would think. Um but fuck, that's good. Skyrim VR, also good. Uh, my PSVR died in about one minute of playing the game. Uh, so I, <laughs> I, I got to run around in that first um, cave that you go into. And it was weird to see it in 3D. Like, it was cool to go. You could hear the water and that ability to feel like you're there. I was all, oh, shit, this could be. And it was about the uh, Skyrim for the Switch, graphically. You know, because VR, mm -hmm. they have right. to turn the graphics down. Which, mm -hmm. I'm sort of okay with I, I was i was pretty impressed for the couple minutes i played it until the ps the psvr died fuckers um anybody gonna get if it comes for the vive and i know reg probably hasn't dusted off his vive since fucking forever forever um yeah. anybody anybody gonna pick up you know does that interest them a skyrim for the vive does that interest yeah absolutely okay uh skyrim for the vive and and fallout 4 mm -hmm. uh, which mm -hmm. they're working on both and, and they're doing doom i think as well right yeah all three yeah um yeah i mean it, the vive the vive has so few full games 
right? right? It's a lot of tech demos and some of them are great. Uh, rec room is a great little tech demo. The lab is a great <laughs> little, like they're, they're awesome and fun to play, but after you've done them, you're not going to go back to them after, you know, day after day after day, but getting into Skyrim would be an awful lot of fun. Uh, even if the graphics have to be a little bit lower because they've got to render it twice. I mean, that's that's kind of a non-issue. Yeah. Um, I have heard that there are a lot of motion sickness issues in Skyrim specifically, though, for people that have played the demo. Um, I tried to get in on it at PAX, but the lines were like three hours long. So I decided there were better uses of my time. I, I mean, yeah. I could see that happening. Skyrim doesn't have a lot of... Uh, it, it doesn't really do the peripheral thing, which is the new thing that people are doing. It does it a little bit on the PSVR, where if you move, um, you see this black shadow sort of come around. That's supposed to yep. uh, alleviate a little bit of the of the motion sickness. But I did hear the same thing you did. There was a lot of people that were posting videos where they were like, I played Skyrim or I played this and I didn't feel so hot afterwards. I, I would assume that's just not patched in yet, it, because if the PSVR version has it, mm -hmm. I'd be blown away if the Vive version didn't have it. But it's possible. Yeah. What about you, Reg? Skyrim VR, interesting, no interest. Dust off the Vive? I, nah, I don't think I'll dust off any of the headsets for it. Okay, gotcha. All right, so moving on since uh, since that was just me. The next thing we want to talk about is Super Mario Odyssey. And this was not my uh, entry. Who entered this into the list of... All right, me. so go for it, Silver. What's your experience? Yeah, I've, I've been liking it a lot. I've just sort of, I've been playing it very lightly each day like maybe an hour or two hours um <laughs> just when i got to play it mm -hmm. um and i thought that's that was just like the perfect fit for me uh, playing it that way um just the game it's a lot of fun it's it's mario i mean as as we know him uh, collecting coins uh but this time you also sort of collect coins to buy outfits and keep getting stuff and mm -hmm. as you progress through the world there's always new things to explore new things to unlock just a, a new moons to find and the way the moons are hidden and you have to track them down is really cool um it's just it's a lot of fun and and the, the, the way the gameplay mechanics intersect the way you um possess enemies and so forth is just a really nice gameplay mechanic that works i think would you say um so it drops to 540p drops to a pretty low resolution at times have you noticed any of the resolution stuff or does a small screen help i screen? haven't i haven't I haven't even noticed at all, and gotcha. I, I've mainly played it docked. Okay, okay. That's interesting. Okay, cool. Um, would you say it's Game of the Year quality for you? No. It, it, it's simply because it's been such a great year. I would <laughs> yeah, say. Right. Um, right. But that, that's why. Uh, but it's certainly, certainly an excellent game, and gotcha. I would easily recommend it. Gotcha. Anybody else played that at all besides me? Yes. What do you think, Reg? What what what's your impression so far? Uh, I like it a lot. So it's a very fun game, a very colorful game. It doesn't punish you at all. You can just die over and over again, which I actually enjoy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> compared to all the uh, classical Mario games, right? It's like you lose five coins and that's it. Here, try again. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm I'm not too far in. I think I'm just barely before you reach the human world. Oh, with gotcha. the Weird interaction with the <laughs> yeah, with real people. Uh, docked, <laughs> undocked. People. How, you yeah. play, how, how are you playing that? Docked or undocked? Um, mixed. Mixed. Okay. Both, really? Yeah. Uh, have you I'd noticed say any... about 50 50 50 50 have you noticed any? I mean, does the resolution? I have noticed that the resolution isn't the best, but I think. Just the color work uh, helps right. it along a lot. I would. I, I, I'm one of these days. I'm gonna have to do a video just on color work because boy, does that work I, to change to like yeah. make you ignore other things. If somebody has Doom, that was one of the things that got me through Doom on the Switch. Was you forget how cool the color work is in Doom. It's you always think, of, or at least I think of Doom and Quake. Quake even more so, being sort of drab, and then you jump in and you're like, Bro, whoa, yeah. fuck, you know? Yeah, it's really good. Uh, GB, did you get Mario? Uh, not yet. Not yet. I'm thinking about it. It's, you know, it's something on, you know, the to-do list, I guess, but there's just other games I'm playing right now and it's just, it hasn't really timed out right. LA yeah, New exactly. <laughs> What about you, Tarmac? Um, you don't have a Switch? I, no. Uh, 
You know, th this game is going to make me buy one. Um, oh. I was really down on the Switch when it was first announced. I, I was convinced this was just a waste of time. Uh, and I couldn't have been more wrong. Over the last little while, Zelda and then Mario Rabbids, like the, the Kingdoms mm. one. Yeah. I, I want to play these things so much. And and Mario Odyssey is the first game in years that I, I've i actually spent some time watching other people play oh, like wow. on Twitch and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Because it's it, it it's obvious how how well designed this game is, and if you yeah. you know if you loved Mario sixty four back in the day, right, you are going to love Odyssey. It it just and and seeing the variety of things that you can possess and and interact with that it it doesn't even tell you necessarily that you can do it. You just figure it out as you're playing. Um, yeah. God, it looks so good, and yeah, I'm probably gonna buy a Switch to play Mario Odyssey pretty soon. Yeah, it's so weird because Rabbids is still my favorite of all the switch games so far, but Mario is one of those titles that um, you, you are playing it. And it's weird. Cause you just notice <laughs> this level of polish that isn't on most games. And it just, and it just continues. Like the more you play it, the more you're like, wow, this really doesn't let me down. You know, there's a lot of games that we play and yeah. you know how it is. It's front loaded. That first hour, you're like, jippity doo doo. This is the greatest thing in yeah. the world. And then about two hours in, you're all, nothing's happened. Like all the cutscenes are gone. They're not doing anything. It's just like grind, grind. And Mario, what's how many moons does Mario have? Like nine? I think Lone was saying it's got nine hundred or something, doesn't it? Like secret I don't know the total. secret moons yeah. or something like that, or or mini moons. So no, that wouldn't I'm surprise sure. me. That's insane. I mean, there's a ton yeah. of content. I know some people aren't happy with the level size, and I could certainly, mm. I, I I would see over time. It's one of those things that in the first ten hours it may not bother you, but I could see. See, for somebody like us, most of us smaller is actually better it's more digestible it's what silver was saying more focused too yeah silver was saying an hour or two in mario is what he likes well then that makes perfect sense for him but some people want to sit down and play eight hours and i think for some reason you know it just it changes how you feel about it i'm glad to see switch yeah. doing awesome man they've mm -hmm. i mean some of the stuff yeah. is just it's crazy i yeah. was the same I way mean, they've had they've had a slew of indie games too um, true arrive on it uh and we got stardew valley which is just wonderful on a portable system okay it's 999 power moons in total. That's insane. Wow. That's insane. <laughs> See you guys in six years. <laughs> Only come back to the podcast once you beat it. Um, or got 100%. <laughs> so moving on from there, let's talk Assassin's Creed Origins one last time because we talked about it. Uh, matter of fact, I don't even know if I got to post that fucking podcast. No, we didn't. Okay. I don't think so. So, so we have continued to play it. Some of us. Some of us haven't returned, I'm sure. Uh, Tarmac, first of all, I don't know if I've ever heard you say if you played this. I, I, I keep answering no. Uh, yeah, no, I, I haven't. <laughs> um, the, the last little while, it's it's been a little bit busy for me. So I, I got to South Park, and then mm. after South Park was done, it was all other things. Uh, I mean, it, it looks it, it looks great. It genuinely does from what I've seen. Um, but I'm kind of burnt on Assassin's Creed. You know, I, I sure. played Syndicate. Syndicate was great. Um, I, I want them to go back to pirates again because that was the greatest thing <laughs> ever yeah. in the Assassin's Creed uh, universe. Uh, so no origins, I have not. Gotcha. What about you, GB? I can't remember. I apologize. No, and I, I agree with Tarmac. I want uh, a Black Flag game. Black. You know, like it's on IP. Oh. As I've mentioned before, you know, I think they sh they should have just taken it, and made its own IP. I know they're coming out of a pirate game, but their pirate game looks like shit. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What about you, Silver? Uh, I know I, you're doing it for the let's like, play, I, I was, but I was I was really negative on it when we sort of um, started talking on it, talking about it. Um, those were my first. <laughs> yeah, your bugs. Those were my first impressive <laughs> yeah. impressions. Um, but they mm -hmm. they got a lot better as the game went along, and I really got pulled into the world because by far the the game's strongest asset is its world building, which right. is, I mean that's not that's not saying much because that's sort of the strongest asset of all the Assassin's Creed games, but it's really 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 amazing here the way they pull off ancient egypt um like the way the architecture is different from alexandria where it's more greek to memphis where it's more egyptian yeah. to um cyrene where it's more roman it's just and and just the tons of little touches and details uh, some of which you covered in the video um oh the walk in the walk right. just yeah they just sort of i mean the fact that when bayek puts on a mask it muffles not only does it muffle his voice but his lips and mouth are still animated, so you can actually see him talk yeah. underneath the mask, where in most games they would use that as an excuse to cut the animation budget and not animate him. Right. Um, but it does here. And 
it just goes on and on with the details and it just sort of works to just immerse you into this world especially when you'd like turn off the hut and just walk around in it which is what i really love to do unfortunately the game is sort of let down by the combat which i agree with you on to an extent yeah, that it's, it's just not all that enjoyable right. and the game is sort of really dragged down by a couple of really really awful boss fights like the fights against the war elephants are really bad there's a bunch of fights in the arena where you have to repeat them over and over again because you have to go through one round and then you have to go through go through the second round which are the same fights just repeated again on a higher difficulty um wow. which is just it's just not fun um i already killed tedious. you <laughs> and then yeah, they, yeah. Yeah. right um it, uh, it, go yeah. ahead go ahead no it's just um yeah and i have a problem with the ubisoft spawn which is whenever you run wow. into a patrol the game will just start start spawning patrols right on you so you start you check the map and the map is empty aside from that single patrol and then you start engaging it and all of a sudden you get five patrols in one intersection and it's just complete anarchy yeah and and that's typical for ubisoft games it's the same in far cry and so on and i just i don't like that i don't like that you the ubisoft is scared of quiet moments they're scared True. of just letting you explore the world they you have you have to be jumped by a crocodile an alligator mm -hmm. or a bandit all the time you can't just mm -hmm walk through a play through a field or whatever and be left alone um and that that kind of bothers me a little bit it's funny you mention that because i mentioned it in the review that la noir is quite comfortable with silence so you can mm -hmm. just yeah, walk precisely. around and there's and i even said in the review i'm like i'm sure there'll be people who are going why aren't robberies happening every 25 seconds because that's what they're so accustomed to in games and yeah. U ubisoft certainly has no problem saying you know, here's a bandit fighting a crocodile. You know, the one thing I will yeah. say about Ubisoft that I like <laughs> is the past, present, present, past thing I always talk about where I want to feel like the, something was happening prior to I got there and it's a mystery. And there was this one section in my walking the walk where I walked into an area and all of the crocodiles were dead. They had all been killed. And it was this moment where I was like, I don't know if the AI did it. I have no, it doesn't matter to me. I was like, somebody went through here and fucked the shit out of all these like, or crocodile. <laughs> sorry. And so I'm like, now I need to watch out for this crocodile hunter. You know, is Steve Irwin out here? And he's like, crocky. <laughs> I, I had no clue what was happening. And I don't even think I figured out in that area why it had happened. But that's one thing I do like is where you'll come, yeah, up, you'll, true. you'll come on something, not come on something. That sounds really gross. You'll come upon <laughs> something and you'll be like, what happened here prior to me getting here? And that, yeah. that to me is one of my favorite moments. What about you, Reg? Um, I, I oh, just, uh, another, another thing that I really like the story. Uh, I think it's actually probably the best narrative I've seen in, a, in an Assassin's Creed game because it's the most cohesive. There are very, very few time skips. The game starts out with a flashback. <laughs> Get the fuck out. But it's very brief. <laughs> And yeah. then from there on, it's pretty much all set in 49 BC up until towards the ending where it does skip a little bit in the ending because i feel i feel like that's always been my main disconnect with the assassin's creed game is that sure they've sort of tried to fit their narrative into uh, mm. historical events where yeah. they've had to do these completely random time skips that just come into the plot at just completely random intervals and are never really acknowledged like i remember one of the worst ones was in assassin's creed 3 where after you assassinate a target it tells you three years pass and then Connor comes back and sees Achilles and sees, says, oh, I killed this guy. And he talks like he killed him yesterday, but three right. three years passed. Right. And, and that really takes you out of the game. Like, what the hell happened that took Connor three years to get uh, back to Achilles there, you know? Um, yeah. But that, do, that doesn't happen in, uh, in Origins. It fe the narrative feels cohesive in that way. And I really like that. I can see that. What about you, Reg? Any further thoughts on it since the last time we oh, all talked? I did actually complete it. Um, Whoa! What the fuck? <laughs> wow. Are you kidding? You beat it? No. Yep. This is a golfer's clap for Reg, man. That I is even, rare. That that was actually a good week for me. I even beat Wolfenstein two in the happening? same week as well. What's happening? <laughs> Who are you and what have you yeah. done? Right? Where's the real Reg? What the <laughs> fuck, really? Okay. Well, we'll talk about Wolfenstein maybe in a second. But so you beat it. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Yep. From like overall, uh, I I, I uh, it changed enough from past Assassin's Creed to make me enjoy it again. Mm -hmm. I think uh, would be the summation of my feelings towards it. Uh, the part I definitely hated every time it popped up, even if it was just a couple times, was when they pull you out of the game into the 
And, real world yeah. setting <laughs> right it's like why do you keep doing this why yeah, do you keep making your game so bad keep <laughs> stop, yeah. just stop it nobody cares about that shit yeah yeah right <laughs> what uh so i i'm just i'm really a little stunned you finished it i don't even my questions aren't even in line with <laughs> i'm not lying because okay okay let me think i have a question Did, is one of the reasons you finished it the lack of collectibles and the fact that the quests are the people versus like feathers moving around. Did you notice that? Did you care? Uh, it was definitely that uh, the lack of collectibles, the lack of, of just random crap on the map. Uh, it was still there, but m much less so. It was m mostly like crafting stuff. Um, and also that the world is just so beautiful. <laughs> it's just yeah. you, you don't really want to leave it. I don't know. I think that, yeah. what to that say. definitely yeah. helped it along. That's, the Reg, which wow. was your favorite tower? <laughs> That's a, 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 I, do, do, do you want to really be shocked? <laughs> they didn't. No, they I didn't. climbed every single one. <laughs> what? No, you're not the real Reg. You know why, Reg? I, and I talked about this in the review. I think that it doesn't feel like a tower, even less so than yeah. Primal, which you could go into caves. It's still they don't matter as much. Sorry, they barely matter in origins and what I still believe that people like Reg will see a game with a bunch of map mess and you become it's a subconscious desire to say I'm not doing all this and I'm, yeah. I'm done I'm just I'm walking away from this title but in a game where it's just sort of organic and it's like this person is the quest versus this fucking flying piece of paper or whatever stupid stuff has happened in the past yeah see well, yeah, yeah the sea shanties or whatever i think that uh, somebody like reg who maybe doesn't have you know like the desire to sit and do all that stuff it's easier i, I was at like i think 50 percent into the game where i just said okay now i'm going exploring and just went through right. each single tower <laughs> let me tell you though i and and you know i i still firmly believe it's a weight um for various reasons but i i have to say this is not me nitpicking on the game because all games do this but the quest <laughs> the logic in some games quests boggle my mind you meet a girl yeah. who's gonna kill herself and she says i was gonna kill myself because my boyfriend died and the one thing i remember is these amazing birds nearby and it it keeps me alive and what does she have you do <laughs> go kill the fucking birds and bring her a feather and i was like yep. when i was well, doing it i was all this is amazing this is like <laughs> I, this is like burning down the bar to people met at I remember that quest <laughs> to get well, married yeah. That's not uh, her asking you for it, though. That's Bayek making that decision himself. It, it, do, it doesn't matter. It's the fact that none of it makes sense. But yeah. None of it makes sense. And it's I love like, those birds. Here's a feather. Yeah. yeah. Here's a feather. And you, she doesn't say, how did you come about this feather? It's like, as you're covered in gore and shit, you're like, sup? Here's your feather. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that was awesome. And it was awesome in a bad way, where I didn't ding the game for that. It, you, we get that quest shit that does it. Skyrim. This person's dying, and if you don't return right away, and I return six months later, and they're like, thank God you returned, and she can have the potion, and you're all, no, seriously, dude, her kidneys would be yeah. shut down. She's, she's been dead for years. So that's cool, man. Congrats on beating it, uh, beating Wolfenstein, too. That's, damn, I don't even know what to say. That's your achievement list has now gone up yeah. by two for the first time in like six years. <laughs> like, which version of Wolfenstein did you get? Like the censored version or the uncensored? Oh, yeah, which... No, the uncensored version. Oh, okay, wow. Dude. Gotcha, gotcha. So instead of like pyramids, they have swastikas. Actually, I don't that we that si I can't even describe what that sign is Does, uh, that they replaced it with oh, in the censored version. The cross. Is it because they just, showed me? Oh, okay. Because yeah. somebody was showing some weird symbol. Maybe it wasn't for that, and I thought that that's what they replaced it for. So they just use the iron cross. That yeah, was the oh basically. okay okay. And, and instead and, of Hitler, it's my chancellor. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't <laughs> have a mustache, right? And he doesn't have a mustache. I right? want mustache DLC so bad. So bad. And I, so, or mod it. Just a big old Frenchy mustache. What were you going to say, BB? I just think, I think honestly, sorry, Germany. I love you, Germany, but you're going a little too far with this whole thing. <laughs> yeah, the mustache, mustache I mean, removal come was Come on, weird. it's part of history, okay? Yeah. And well, to, to be fair, the steps, uh, how far they are taking it in censoring themselves, that's Bethesda's call. They're doing it before any law tells them to. Okay, well, okay. I guess it's I guess it's nice of them to do that, I suppose. Yeah. Well, they're well if if they re try to release an uncensored version in Germany, they run the risk of uh, landing on the index, uh, okay. which means that then in Germany they couldn't advertise the game at all. 
Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Not one bit. They couldn't even put it on a store shelf. People would have to ask to get the game to get it. Hmm. So in order to not risk that, they self-censor. Yeah, but it doesn't sure. even it doesn't even paint the Nazis in a good light. They're the the villains still. So I don't know. It's just yeah. But at the same time, I applaud Bethesda for for I guess you know planning ahead, right? <laughs> yeah, and knowing that that was going to be an issue. Um, Although I, I will just add to that as well, the censored version, even worse than what they censored, really, is that it's only available in German. Oh. <laughs> You can't play the censored version in English. <laughs> wow. Yeah, wow, wow was a good, was a good uh, thing to say there. All right, so we'll break for personal stuff. This is where we talk about things for a couple minutes uh, that don't involve YouTube or gaming in general, outside shit. Anybody doing mm. anything cool this weekend? Tarmac, you doing anything amazing aside from work, probably? Oh, too much stuff at the, at the data center at work. Um, I, I, need to, I need to get back into doing some stuff at the gym. It's been, hmm. you know, four or five months. Used to work out like three times a week, and and I just haven't been. So I think that's it's it's time to go do some deadlifts. Need yeah, to, just yeah. deadlifts, nothing else. Need to need <laughs> to break the back in again a little bit. You know, exactly some of that kind of you stuff. You should go in and go and be like, I don't need a membership unless you have a deadlift only membership. Do you have like where it's a dollar <laughs> because that's the only equipment I'll be using. Um, it, that, other than uh, starting to go back to the gym, anything cool or amazing going on? Um, you know, not a, not a huge amount outside of gaming. I, I missed Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, uh, oh, and okay. like, I, I just, I never got around to playing it. And from what I understand, I think Walmart's doing some kind of Black Friday thing and I can go pick it up for 30 bucks. So I, I think that's going to be happening like today or tomorrow. Oh, very uh, cool. I'm, I'm really excited to try it out because I've heard nothing but good. So yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. What about you, GB? Anything outside uh, of gaming? The only two things I'll probably do if I have time, you know, depending on how soon I can get the uh, live stream done tomorrow and other content is uh, two uh, TV shows on Netflix that got released today. Long, uh, Longmire. Yep. Longmire and Punisher, baby. Yeah. Um, double binge. Well, I may have to put off Longmire till next week, but at least Punisher I'm going to be binging on. Very cool. Uh, <laughs> I had forgotten you enjoyed Longmire and, oh, yeah. um, yeah, it's the final season, too. It is, I know, which sort of depresses me, but yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. as long as they wrap it up, you know, I mean, every, nothing lasts forever. And I'd rather it wrap up, you know, the f fantastic final arc and oh. series finale than to keep going on and on True. and on. Yeah, you well, mean or, like or just stop in the middle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that too. Yeah. So if you guys are, are big TV buffs, it, does does Black Sails keep good after its first episode yeah anybody yeah, watching yeah that? it does I've, I've seen it from the beginning to end uh like the first half black sales take a, takes a long time to get going um mm -hmm. like the middle of the first season to the second season is when really the second season is where it really starts to pick up and nice. become yeah. really really good i didn't really like the ending of the show but but i like the show overall for me i would say i i thought it was oh, i thought it was okay to good but I, I i i didn't enjoy it as much as silver did it was it was certainly i i don't know i think it's when it is that slow and they don't just start on episode six or whatever it's just that's when the ramp up starts and a ramp yeah. up takes a long time it, it's almost like everybody was leaning back just being like sup man we know we got something good so let's extend it and i feel it i guess i feel like there was a discussion it, it, it happens in there but it doesn't mean it's bad it just means you can feel it sort of groaning under the weight of getting going you're like okay please uh -huh. something the, the production gets really impressive like some of the battles um, yeah. of the later seasons are like anything you would see in like a, a, a movie. pirates of the caribbean movie or whatever it yeah, certainly nice. feels like they got money finally i will say that yeah. it, you know how some seasons w they'll pare down and you'll be all like lie to me with tim roth one of my favorite tv shows of all time season three it looks like they filmed it in a port uh, like a porta potty it it yeah. went from it went from big locations and um and a big office to this little tiny dark the lighting was off and that happens a lot of times and it's the yeah. opposite with black sales black sales is just like sup bitches we have more money and it's just it, it's noticeable right away so what were yeah. we gonna say gb no, i agree i agree it was oh, sad okay. that the finals season of lie to me was like that because it was very very obvious it was wasn't it, it, it I, I still to this day wish there was a behind the scenes for what happened on that show same thing happened on west wing though season six and seven things get smaller they try to hide it 
but like when a speech happens, there's only like 15 people in an auditorium mm -hmm. versus 500 in the first, you know, first couple seasons. Um, so what about you, Reg? You do anything cool and special? Same, same as every weekend, I suppose. Uh, last weekend didn't uh, we didn't manage to get uh, tabletop simulator going, mm -hmm. so we're trying again this weekend. And I'm still having to think about what to cook on the weekend, because weekend is always the big cooking cooking day. Saturday usually. Saturday. What about you, Silver? Uh, rest, man. Am I? Am I sleep through the entire weekend? Like work's been crazy. Oh like yeah, I, I show forgot up, you started I show a up, job. I show up for my first work day and they tell me like, oh, I'm so glad you're here. Like the principal got fired last week. Like just no notice at all. Just got fired. So um, here you go. Sit down at the office. We're going to need you to set up our Wi-Fi. We're going to need you to set up our phone system. And uh, oh, wow. we're going to need you to handle our calls. <laughs> and you're going to need to take care of whatever children come up into the office during recess when they injure themselves. So I'm basically also running a medic station up there because the children come up with like scrapes and bruises and shit, and I have to Band-Aids. bandage them. Uh, no, band no, 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 no. You, whatever. Band what you. you need is a big yeah. bag of dirt and just rub some dirt on it. Be like, here, throw it's dirt on their salt cut. tablets. Get the fuck. Oh shit! <laughs> Get the fuck back out there. They're screaming. They're like, and I have to man the phones, and whenever there's a computer in one of the classrooms that doesn't work, I have to go attend to that. And it's just nonstop well, craziness, man. At least you're getting out of the house, Silver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's see. Did I get? Did I hit everybody? Uh, I did. Except for you. Hmm. Uh, last week we went to the cabin to get away for the first time. That'd be the first vaca true vacation in three years. That was pretty fun. We played Star Wars Imperial Assault, which is a board game, um, which has some great rules and was really fun, but was really ultra stressful on one or two things. And it's it's typical where you get that game where one rule just makes no sense, and you have everybody. And not right. to be rude, but if somebody's character would benefit, they're going to argue towards the benefit. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, they're not. And, and we I have some really fair players, like people who would just be like, oh. And so what I did was I was just like, you know what? Whatever makes it worse on me, because one person plays the Imperials, which was me and everybody else plays Heroes. I was like, whatever makes it worse on me, if we have a rules discussion, we'll just we'll just assume it's worse on me than it is on you guys. And we still smoked them. Like, it's one of the few games where they it, it, the cool thing about this board game is it's the first one I've ever seen really do this well, where you play it like a D&D &D choose your own adventure. You do a mission and then depending on how you did and what you did in that mission, it tells you what mission to go to next. And each mission, you put down a new map with these tiles. And that to me was like mini D&D, &D, which I loved because it was like, mm -hmm. if you don't do well, then you do the captured mission where you have no equipment and you have to go find it and grab it out of a storage shed and escape. And and but if you did succeed you go on like a you know a destroy an imperial star destroyer from the inside by going and doing covert actions like so there was this awesome thing and there was 40 campaigns i think we only hit six but but the last like two or three it just got harder and harder and then vader shows up and this is one of those games where the hero shows up and he's a true hero how many times have we seen a game show up where the hero like a, a main character shows up and you kill him pretty simple. That was not happening with Vader. He was just force choke, force choke, force choke, force choke, force choke. <laughs> and people were dying left and right. And it was like, wow, we're like the BBB team. We're not, you know, <laughs> we're the team that you call when you want to say you did something. But that's about it. Like, yeah, we did something. That's these guys. And they all died. But we we tried. <laughs> and that, well, that was how it is. Many both died to bring you those it's gun stars. It's off. exactly yeah. what yeah. somebody said. After the <laughs> after the third mission. After the third mission, it said we 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 lost and it says this part you're you're over. Like you have to restart the campaign because you've died enough times. And that's exactly what somebody said is well, many Bothans did die to bring us Yeah, yeah, multiple times. A Chewbacca ripoff died as well. And so did uh so did a droid, I think. So that was fun to get away from um, from YouTube, to get away from constant demonetization. It was nice. Well earned too. Yeah, it was fun. Appreciate it. And uh, that was it's always good to hang out with friends. We had like five people, four or five people there, and just sat and relaxed and and talked about crazy shit. So that was that was a blast. I've got some friends. Luckily, none of these guys that I I brought who are conspiracy theorists. Uh, luckily I didn't bring, I, I brought one who doesn't know a lot about what's going on with like games. So that was fun to sort of like from the outside, like very little still has a 360. That's a system of choice. 360 hasn't, ha hasn't upgraded. So that was fun to talk to him and have him say stuff and be all, no, 
not at all. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, because they're not in the inn, right? They don't check the forums. You, you that... pre-ordered what? Yeah, exactly. That, yeah, exactly. That would be pretty much the way the conversation went. Uh, yeah, so that was fun. Um, anything else for me? Negative. That was... Oh, yeah, that was it. All right, so moving back on to game news. EA shut down Visceral and then bought Respawn. Tarmac had a uh, idea of why that this might have happened. Do you want to sort of break that down? Well, when you when you terminate any kind of business, and uh, some of this gets a little bit tinfoil hat-ish, but it, the shoe fits. No, that's fine. Uh, yeah. When you terminate any sort of business, uh, there are certain liability transfers that are, are involved. Um, when you close down an existing operation and when you buy a new one, when you're taking over their liabilities and bringing existing assets in. So it's entirely possible that the visceral closure is partly what funded the respawn acquisition. Um, and also Titanfall two was lined up against battlefield and COD mm -hmm. by electronic arts. That's they're the ones that picked that, that release date. Um, so whether it was intentional or not, and I don't want to necessarily accuse them of it, but whether it was intentional or not, uh, guaranteed it dropped the uh, buying price of respawn. Um, if, if that had sold gangbusters, it would have cost them a lot more to acquire the studio. True. Yeah, very true. So, um, anybody have anything to add to that? Thoughts? Why it happened? Just that uh, I I agree with I. I think that's very clearly the reason for the timing, certainly of the purchasing of of respawn. Um, that makes a lot of sense. But I I'm not so sure I agree with um, the reasoning for for uh, the the positioning of uh, of Titanfall two. Uh, necessarily, I don't um, think Tarmac was saying just, that's his f firm belief. He was just no, no, saying, no, 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 no. I get it. Um, just, but just with the theory itself, um, because I don't think EA is really at the point where they necessarily want to limit their profit, their potential for profit in that way deliberately, um, even right. if it is with the aims of a potential future sale. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't think they would like deliberately sabotage in that way. But that might be naive. Uh, this is a corporation we're talking about. Of course they would. <laughs> well, I think what Silver's saying is a corporation also looks at the money you can make on hand right away, too. Precisely. Yeah. And um, it's, not, it's not for it's not for benevolent reasons. It's for profit reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they they do those sorts of risk analysis calculations when they're yeah. considering an acquisition. Right. We want to buy this company a year from now. Very true. OK. Chances are that's going to cost us this much. So if the game only mm -hmm. I mean, it, again, I, I, I don't want to get too into the weeds on it. Um, <laughs> and really accuse them of anything heavy. I just, I, I feel terrible for the people that worked at Visceral. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I heard their Star Wars game was really not shaping up well. It's, you know, you, you kind of hear both sides of the coin. Well, EA is an evil company that likes to buy and close studios. Uh, but also the management on it was sounding like it was a little bit rough. And then now you've got a whole bunch of people at Respawn that just got bought by EA and they're thinking, well, how long until yeah. we're closed? I don't know. You Ask know, the employees who worked for Westwood. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, and uh, origin. Origin. Um, <laughs> mm, yeah. Uh, I'm not et cetera, et cetera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lionhead. Oh, uh, yeah. No, no, no. Wait, no, wait, no, no Lionhead. Lionhead head was. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. That was Microsoft. Yeah. 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 Um, so, but still, it's just long enough. Yeah. It is. It, uh, I don't even know. All I know is that a bunch of weird shit happened. Uh, we do know that the Star Wars wasn't shaping up. Even people now, uh, you know, a couple of the programmers were like, uh, there was a lot of issues behind the scenes, which, funny enough, will be mimicked in some of the stuff we talk about here in a second on on some other companies. So, yeah. but I do think that regardless of if anything was on purpose, what have you, um, I don't think EA was probably like, man, thank God this is doing poor. But I'm sure what happened was, as it was doing poor, that price was dropping, and they were looking for oh, yeah, some yeah, some yeah. set point, almost like a stockholder goes, I'm only going to buy when this stock's at 45 bucks, not 49. That yeah, yeah. that is uh, something yeah. we would do. So I, I, yeah. you know, without even having to go to corporate, you know, a, a, a level and say, yeah, I'm sure they did that because yeah, it, it only makes sense. And you know, you're buying these IPs, and once you buy respawn, if they have any IPs that even if they've been working on, and you're getting those, you can have other companies within yours work on them. I just hope that we don't hear that it's been disbanded after a week. Like that's the like if you yeah. buy if you buy them. Let them let them make some stuff. That's the. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just so nervous that it'll be like next Monday. <laughs> we'll wake up and they'll be like, 
you know, everybody from Respawn has just been jettisoned to these other companies. Uh, yeah. So let, let, let's not forget that EA probably projected that um, Andromeda would be a much bigger hit than it was. That's absolutely yeah. true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Uh, and boy, could they have not been more wrong. Mm. Yeah. Wow. I, I guess a lot of times you just have to actually make a good game to sell well, but that's just me. <laughs> that's the, that'll be my tinfoil hat today. Make a good game and it might sell well, but you know what? We've seen some shit games sell well. Yeah, and we've seen I some great, say, great yeah, games sell poorly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, there is no guarantee, that's for sure. Um, yeah. I mean, well, look at Cuphead. I mean, it's a fantastic game. I haven't played it because I don't want to get, you know, Uber Rage, but, you know, it sells very well. Yeah. Yeah. Hellblade 2. So. I mean, that lines with your conspiracy theory about good games. <laughs> For a second, I thought he said Hellboy, and I was like, that was not a good game. What the fuck are you talking about? He <laughs> said Hellblade. Yeah, okay. Uh, and, and I'm a Hellboy fan. So let's move on to Telltale. Laying off employees last week. 20% or 30%? I think 25%. Jesus. Okay, good job. Good job, Carrick. Right in the middle. Um, that sucks. And mm -hmm. they uh, did you... I don't know if you guys heard, but like one of the people was saying that they were almost happy because the grind there is redonkulous because they're working on so many I IPs. They were just like, it, uh, it was always grind. Not only, that, not only that from what I read, but also the engine, engine, their old engine can't do a lot of stuff yeah. or couldn't do a lot of stuff by now because they're switching. Um, and last minute changes because some, some people higher up think their ideas, idea is the best. Ouch. Uh, despite <laughs> being proven wrong by others. Stuff like that. That's just perfect management. I think yeah. GB and I are probably the bigger fans right now on this podcast of their games. I know we both like Batman a lot. We've all liked Wolf, I think, and, and a couple yeah. others. But to me, it's just depressing because Batman, obviously, they're not taking that team away. But um, I, some of the impressive new stuff we saw in Batman, the duality that they played out there and all that kind of stuff. And then we see like a Marvel, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, which didn't really do much. And... To me, like, I hope they don't just use this as some desire, as some, like, almost, I guess, an excuse to just do those IPs that are massive, like a Marvel, because it wasn't the best game where Batman, mm -hmm. still big, but Batman really is a, a good series of titles. And Minecraft is not at all, season two at least. Mm -hmm. So I'm just nervous about it. I don't, it sucks. Well, I feel, I feel a difference between season one and two of Batman now. Season one was better, more, like focused. Mm. I feel like it is. I feel like it, it is overall. I mean, obviously, we, we're not getting episode three of season two till Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So the jury's still out on whether or not how it's going to stack with season one. But what I'm saying is, like, season one was focused. You know, each month a new episode came out. You know, August, September, October, November, December. There's been delays. Like, episode two was delayed. And episode three was delayed. And... It feels like, I mean, plus, plus I heard about sales not being as good. Mm. So I feel like there's a lot of turmoil happening, even with the Batman you know, Telltale True. series. And as most of you guys know, I'm a huge Batman fan. And I am looking forward to you know, the, the rest of the arc of season two. But at the same time, I fear that this may be the, the last season, especially if those sales are not going so well for Batman Telltale. But I guess we'll find out. It just yeah. it feels like there's a lot of stuff happening inside of Telltale right now that's not good. I'm I'm just looking at the report I, I read a bit earlier today, and it was talking about yeah sometimes uh, management would uh, hand down heavy rewrites that would at times even cover up to eighty percent of the whole game that would have to be read of rewritten and redone. Mm. Wow, I mean, and, that that, yeah. that certainly goes away towards explaining some of the longer like yes. waiting periods between some of the episodes. Yeah, and it says like sometimes team leadership would push through uh, with rewrites anyway, for one of many reasons: time, prestige, actual belief in subpar ideas. Mm. We'd always you... fix the product in the end, but deep fixes, uh, those fixes were always disruptive. So that yeah. would definitely explain some of the delays in in the seasons. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine these guys making South Park, where like Trey and Matt, they they make a South Park episode in like three days with a, like the that week deadline? Yeah. <laughs> that would never happen. I mean, cause... although they are also talking about uh, having to work with established I IPs in itself is also a big hindrance because yeah. you always have yeah. to also coordinate with the, the IP owner. You always have to check. Yeah. 
Game of Thrones is this okay? Terrible. Is this okay? And so on. Yeah, Game of Thrones yeah. wasn't good either. No. Isn't that I, what you said? I, Tarmac was it was terrible. Yeah, I think Game, I Game, of, Game of Thrones was awful. I part of me wonders if if a lot of this is the growth that came after The Walking Dead, right? They they mm-hmm. did yeah. a few seasons. It was amazing, and then all of a sudden they had the different IP uh, owner companies coming in and saying, "We want one of these games for ours." Right? Game of Thrones, Marvel, yeah. Batman. I mean, there's a, a whole bunch of this, and they just grew too fast uh, in yeah. a short period of time. So now they have to cull a little bit of it because not all yeah. of those games are doing well. Yeah, they stretch themselves um, too thin. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see them try releasing a full game instead of uh, doing the season thing. I mean, you look yeah. at the achievements for these things. Uh, here's just a couple of numbers on the Batman one. 63.8% of people finished episode or chapter 6, episode 1, and you lose another 5% before you get to the end of uh, episode 2. Right? Like, people are they're not buying mm-hmm. every season as they go and i just i wonder because we've never seen anything else really from telltale they've never done just a here's the whole package in one maybe it would sell better maybe yeah. they would do a, you know do really I, well i don't know and tarmac i've heard a lot of people tell me that they're just waiting till the end of the season just like they did last season like look i'm mm-hmm. not gonna do this shit i'm gonna wait till all five episodes are done so i can just sit down and play it start to finish and honestly i mean in some places i think episodic does work but in video games, I really don't like it for the most part. Mm-hmm. And how many of those people that that say that, by the time the last episode comes out, they've forgotten, right? The, exactly. They, they, Telltale yeah. spent so much on marketing all the way through that they don't have a big marketing push for that last that last mm-hmm. episode, and people just don't remember. So. I agree. Reg, uh, anything to yeah. add to any of that? Yeah. No, I was just just reading it up again a bit. They're also talking about how how bad really the old engine was, <laughs> like it didn't even have have any physics in it. And if if you wanted to have the appearance of physics in a scene, you would have to, to tell the animator, and he would have to animate the physics happening. <laughs> Cheated a little. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And stuff like that. I so mean, it it's, che- it cheating it the sounds way. like they they have a lot of internal problems. Yeah. I that's something Carrick's been complaining about forever is that damn engine yeah that's like to me <laughs> well, um, not, not just the engine but we're also talking about uh, so much time being wasted about reacting yeah, to reactions rewrites, in, internally I, I mm. think the thing is is what I mean by the engine too is sort of what Go is saying like it's it's not the greatest there's a ton of issues but also if the engine doesn't do things well and then someone does have an idea and it is good you may not be able to instigate it so to me, yep. the idea of them moving to a better engine means that some of these things, because it's not always bad. I've had people come into my project halfway through and be like, hey, what about this? And you look at it and you're like, fuck, that's a good idea. But then you have mm-hmm. to look at your resources and go, do we have the manpower? Do we have the engine that is even capable? And if it's not, do we rewrite 80%? You know, like we just were reading out loud that that's what some of the these things were causing. With an engine like a Unity, right, is what they switch to, um, you can do those things. And you can also... I'm not going to I'm not going to sugarcoat this. Unity is one of the reasons why a lot of people like Unity is because it's a much quicker from idea to something on your screen than almost any other engine. So in a weird way, I sort of like the idea of these guys switching Unity. I hate it because I'm not a big fan of Unity. I think it's got issues with current gen technology and what they thought it was going to do versus what they have to work with. But at the same time, the idea that maybe they can go, oh, okay, let's try this idea without the, as much angst. What sucks is the dropping of 30 or 25% of people. I do also wonder how many of those people were there just to crop up the shitty engine. And yeah, the, 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 yeah. I, if you talk to anybody who's worked on a shit engine, they'll tell you straight up that like one person now equals five because you need five people to do what only one person would be able to do in Unreal. That to me indicates that there is a chance that some of these people, not all, but some of these people are due to the technological change. So you have a good and you have a bad right along with it. And mm-hmm. and then if you drop people, we would do it at my job. If you drop people from a project, the people above them may go too because there's no need for an HR rep for this group. The group doesn't exist. Like that person. Yeah. So that person's gone as well. So I, I, I don't think I've seen a breakdown of who left. Um, it sucks. But. We'll see, man. I, yeah. I, I want a new Batman. Uh, or, or, you know, I want him to continue Batman. I've really enjoyed those. I, I'm not a, as big of a fan of the season, but I like it. Um, I'd like to see them do some cool stuff on their own, though. It's time to do their own. And they said they were going to, right? 
I thought that all of these announcements also there was something in there saying we are looking at original IP. They they had mentioned that at some point. Yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. that. Not that they'll do good. It would just be weird. No. It would be sort of cool to be like a game by Telltale, truly by us, yeah. not by somebody else that we're that we're taking their stuff. <laughs> the, the Telltale, Telltale. I, exactly. Wouldn't it be cool yes. to be yeah. like, this is ours? No, really, it's ours. It's not anybody else's. Also, Go ahead. But I mean, they they really fundamentally need need to change that philosophy at the company if they're going to keep making games. Because I mean, you at some point you need to lock down and commit. True. Mm-hmm. Or you're going you're gonna to kill the game. I mean, yeah. that's what happened to Duke yeah. Nukem Forever. Or um, if you cut microtransactions <laughs> the day prior to release. You know what I'm curious about yeah. is how they were able to, like, do this balance in between Marvel and DC. Because oh, they're kind true. of competitive. Yeah, right. Like, they don't like this sort of thing where they're like, oh, well, you're dealing with, with DC. you got to dump DC for us or vice versa. That's <laughs> very strange how, you know, Telltale was able to make that work. You're abs- mm-hmm. you are absolutely right. That is that is interesting to see how they've navigated that because you would assume other companies may have some issues where yep. they, they can't do both. Um, and then last but not least, I just want to mention uh, another closing, which sucks, or not closing yet, but soon, is Gazillion Entertainment. They had Marvel Heroes, which is that Diablo yep. slash Marvel game. Oh, fuck, I love that game. And... They're they're going kaput as well, and it looks like what does it say? I don't see a date for when it's stopping. It was end of 2017. I guess I'll just jump in there and play as much as I can. Dude, I met a lot yeah. of patrons on that game because like a lot of patrons would be like, I, I got game time with Garrick. I'm like, eh, you know what? Let's play this Marvel Heroes, and a lot of people are like, man, this is actually yeah. a blast. <laughs> so <laughs> sucks. Um, yeah. Does anybody have anything to add about them? Just just that not. not them specifically just that it's i mean it's an unfortunate reality of online games that we lose them because we don't have a proper curation system yeah. for video games and that yeah. they're sort of lost to time in that way some of them anyway uh, i mean some of them are preserved on like private servers or whatever mm-hmm. um but yeah i wish we could find some sort of curation system for them so that we could preserve them in an archival fashion like we do with liter- literature or other forms of art yeah no, I would agree with that. Uh, okay, so jumping into patron questions, uh, Jason asks, "How are you liking the Xbox One X?" I think we all, I think we all already said that. He says, "I absolutely adore it. It's making me enjoy games in a new way. That's cool." Uh, the next one, Giovanni, I think I'm pronouncing that right. He was on a podcast a while ago. The question will never have an answer. Will the podcast post this time? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then yes um, and no. You can always yeah, answer yeah. yes, because if it doesn't, then exactly. it doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then let's see. Um, beside that, it would be nice to hear your discussion about progression in multiplayer games. Pay to unlock or or pay to unlock. I think he meant to say. Pl- oh, he said play to unlock or pay to unlock. Yeah. Um, I'll open that up for anybody. What are your thoughts on... I mean, um, I, I don't dislike pay I've, to win I've grown, in some I've ways. I've sort of grown sick of progression systems in multiplayer in general. Exactly. I sort of missed, I sort of missed the days you could just go in and play Team Deathmatch. Uh, and that, <laughs> that would be it. Or Capture the Flag oh, or whatever. Overwatch, um, basically. I mean, they don't have a progression. Oh, wow. No, that's, that's true. That's true. Um, but, I mean, they do, they do have the loot box system. Instead. Yeah, but for cosmetics, but of, it doesn't... Yeah. It, it's not really a progression. You're not no, but it does. It does sort of play in psychologically when while you're playing it, sort of. The, the for, loop for a lot of people, anyway. They are the progression, right? Yeah, no. yeah they are. Okay. And and the building of your character cosmetically or whatever is sort of the progression in the game. I would agree with that. Yeah, I think I think we're beyond the point where you can be you can have a game without a progression system. It's just that that's that's what the customers are used to. That's what gamers yeah. want, right? They they need to have kind of that that carrot on a stick uh sort sure. of thing All, they're always yeah. chasing something whether it means anything in in uh you know the how how good they are in the game or anything like that it just having a level counter is enough for some people but i mean do we know that that's necessarily what they want or is it just that that's what they're getting at the moment because we're not really being offered the alternative at the moment well from some some forum thing. posts i've seen seen in the past of i don't remember the game name but one of them didn't have a progression at all and there you'd have people complaining about why why should I come back to the game? Why should I keep playing? There's nothing to unlock. Ah, uh, fuck that. Monopoly doesn't I mean, add pieces. Shut I mean, the, I know. I that, know. That's the Counter-Strike. <laughs> Counter-Strike doesn't have any 
progression doesn't loot boxes. <laughs> I mean, it's all about the damn skins. <laughs> Here's no, a, I mean, that, that's there you basically with it yourself in the food. <laughs> I guess what pisses me off is that okay. I guess people, the old pe I see. people yeah. say I want something and you can't have something else, and that's fucking bullshit. That's what pisses me off is that huh. there are there is an opening in the world for a game to release in whatever way the developer wants and players can engage it in whatever way they want. And so I hate this shit where it's like, because I'm interested, your game needs to fit me. Fuck you. Yeah. That's the same way as saying, because I like Absolutely. a fantasy novelist, their book needs to exactly be what I want. Bullshit. That's stupid. Let them create it. And then you don't get it. And somebody else who wants to play that can. And for me, I was saying, I'm, um, I'm, I, I'm okay with some, uh, some like, I wouldn't even call them pay to win. But I've always been okay with somebody who wants to engage but can't engage at an incredibly grindy level with everybody else. There, there does need to be some way or some system for somebody to do that because I have a lot of friends who I would love to play the game with. And one of the things I love is when a game levels them up with me if we're joining. I yeah. love mm -hmm. that. I love that. Because how many times have we played a game where it doesn't? And you're level 20 and they're 5. Yeah. And they're just getting yeah. their ass stomped over and yeah, over. Or, or, or it levels you down, like some games yeah. do, 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 so you can play together. So mm -hmm. I don't even know what to totally. call those. They're, they're, I, but And I don't want people having to pay for that. That would be stupid. But I do think that we do have to look at gamers and say, we can't celebrate in one hand that new gamers are coming in. And then also say, but you can't have anything you want. Yeah. You have to enter our industry and be identical to us. I'm a firm believer in that companies can do whatever they want and try, and you get burned like Star Wars Battlefront. Because uh -huh. what they tried didn't work for anybody. There, But there has to be a medium out there for some people to try to release things and have it be different than everybody else's. I, I, I would agree that yeah. progression systems can suck, but then it's sometimes they're fun. Like some progression systems they are really be, yeah. fun. And that doesn't mean you'll like it, it just means I like it. I, I just get, I just start to feel odd when people like put their foot down on some stuff. And you're all, really? I mean, let them do it and let them fail. We got to see Battlefront fail. Well, we haven't seen the sales. Battlefront may not have failed. Maybe it was just Disney's two hour call. <laughs> but <laughs> it, it, I, I, I can't wait to see like how some of these roll out. I hate shit like Call of Duty, the fucking loot drops in your face. God, <laughs> I, I want to kill somebody when I see that. But um, <laughs> But I don't necessarily think that that it should always take 40 hours to unlock something either. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. In grinding, that can be its own yeah. suck, right? In a, weird, yeah. in a weird way, Reg sort of proved it in a non-pay-to-win game, which is um, Assassin's Creed. It's like some games have a bunch of map mess and a bunch of shit, and you're like, eh. But if he can just jump yeah. into it and play it, then he's more li yeah. liable to play it. I don't know. It's, yeah. that, I don't think it'll, we'll ever have an answer, I guess. That, that grindy bit was something that came out of the whole EA thing too, right? They th that was their initial post was saying yes. that this is all about a sense of of accomplishment. That's why it takes a long time to unlock yeah. these things. We want you mm -hmm. to have that sense of accomplishment. Unless you pay, then the accomplishment doesn't matter. But you know, <laughs> for the for the grinding, it has to have some. It, yeah, I, 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 I love mean, a good sense of accomplishment. That's great. If it if you have an achievement or you know something in the game you have to work for, that can be an amazing thing. Um, that, that just no, yeah. not when it's that transparent. That did remind me of also their post about the arcade mode, why it's limited. Yeah. It's like yeah, in testing we found that uh, that people then would basically cheat and and get credits in in the offline mode, and we yeah. can't have that influencing our online. It's like, and for money it's no <laughs> issue. I mean, what are you talking about? Yeah. Come on, <laughs> just just straight out say it. You want people to buy it instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it is weird. Yeah. It is weird when they like one thing they say fucks over. That's what I was talking about the programming complexity when they talk in one talking out the side of their mouth and then they mm -hmm. turn around and say something else. And you're like those two don't match up. I don't know. Yes. I, I don't think we'll ever get a perfect system. It, it, it is impossible. Microtransactions are also here forever. They're not you. Yeah. Uh, they're here forever. So gear up fuckers put on put on your special underwear because it's you have to be a big boy or a big girl now and decide what you're going to support. And I think I think the only thing that the question that comes up for me still though is why Call of Duty. I'm just I I mean I get that it's Star Wars and that it's big but Call of Duty boots on the ground blah 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 and then dropping that loot chest it just it is disturbing that I don't see them talked about as much. Because yep. it's also a buggy as fuck game. Now here oh let's talk about bugs for a second. 
Some people have said that Star Wars Battlefront 2 is very buggy, and I didn't, ex well, except for the yeah, AI. I've, I've seen those but, videos about the bugs. Yeah. yeah, did anybody experience those? Because I didn't experience yeah. any myself, bugs. Mine went perfectly fine. I, yeah, I was... It, um, go ahead. I was watching Azra and live streaming last night because she has like 10 hours on Origin. She's mm -hmm. not buying it, but like they were playing in, in the hangar in Naboo, and they actually fell off the map. Sure. And they, they were outside the map. <laughs> For like for like most of the match, I'm like, yeah, and it all looked like really shitty. And I'm like, yeah, EA Dice, uh, you need to fix this. And I heard that that's not the only instance that has happened when it comes to bugs in uh, Battlefront 2. <laughs> yeah, I think Jim did. Uh, Jim Sterling Jim did, did a video. video, and he had a lot of issues in his video. It's yeah. it's, it's so funny because people his attack tiebreaker. Yeah, yeah. People <laughs> like trying to shoot anything like that while the image is doing that. Yeah, people will people will. Uh, <laughs> will be like, well, I didn't have any bugs. It, just, it doesn't, I mean, I didn't have any bugs, but it doesn't mean somebody else didn't. And that's the, the problem with today's, it's a problem with any game. Um, because even in the past with the Genesis, that would happen. I'd be playing a game and I'd go to school and tell somebody and they'd be all, well, I didn't have that. Yeah, that's because it's called a bug. Otherwise, if it stopped everybody from progressing, they wouldn't really, it wouldn't even be legal to release the game. It would be a broken product. Or mm -hmm. if they found out later, they would have to patch it right away. Um, but back to microtransactions, I just don't think we're ever going to, there's, there's, they're in, they're not going away since horse armor. And I just don't <laughs> think we're ever going to see like anything that pleases everybody. But I will say this, we certainly see that something that displeases everybody. And I think that when it comes to switchbacks, this is easily equal to, in, in some ways, I think it exceeds the Xbox One turning off their online only. And the yeah. reason why I say that is because this game was pretty much released. They say it's released today. Bullshit. I mean, the the number of people who got it prior yeah. is pretty is pretty well, high. It was really released as soon as the the early access started. Exactly. Oh, I do yeah. have a question. Um, so Xbox they did their thing. They were like, okay, obviously this doesn't work. Battlefront does their thing. Um, do you guys like? Does this change your? Will you jump into this quicker because there are no microtransactions, or are you the type of people that? And this isn't bad, so that sounded bad. I didn't mean it to. Or are you? Are you guys like burned me once? I'm. I'm never. You know, I'm. I'm not at all like burned me once, never return. I mean, it depends on the context and what happens. Um, if a game burns me, yeah. Okay. Um, the, they so. pulled this stuff out so quickly that it means that the entire game is already ba uh, you know, balanced around its inclusion. And so the fact that they pulled it out, they didn't actually change the game. The game is going to be as grindy as it would otherwise yes. have been. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so I, I, can't, I, I can't find any interest in it because of that. Right? Uh, yeah, okay. Well, like my main interest in Battlefront 2 was not multiplayer because I suck at multiplayer. I get wrecked so easily. Mine was... Uh, the story, the campaign, just like the 501st story with the very first Battlefront 2, which is awesome, by the way. Uh, it was way too short, and like we said earlier, uh, it just felt jumbled together, you know, just patchwork. And I've already watched the cutscenes, I already know what happens from start to finish, so I have no reason to buy it. And I already played it in the demo, the, the multiplayer version already, so, you know, I'm moving on to the next game. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's fair. Um, Mr. Rupp, sort of a uh, lar larger a point about sort of the larger point about corporate business practices sort of in gaming today and the sense that it's worse than ever that you hear from a lot of corners because I was talking to a friend the other day about uh, the old days um, and do you guys remember like the dawn of the digital um, digital games like yeah. services like uh, direct to drive and so on Mm -hmm. Very like much they, so. Yeah. They they would actually limit your download. So even if not only were they more expensive than retail, they would limit your download. So you could only download a, the game for maybe a year, and then if you wanted to download the game after that year, you had to pay an extra fee on top of that. That sucks. Mm. Yes. And I mean that that was common practice for di digital downloads at at the dawn of that of that um, distribution platform. <laughs> I also don't so, think. So, so this this sort of thing with like corporations looking for the next new thing to make money isn't anything uh, new at all in of the course industry. not they've always tried to couch <laughs> their customers that's sort of that's what corporations try to do i was gonna in add general i was gonna add that um i don't think anybody who's played games long enough can can forget that you know street fighter sold us 85 versions 
championship <laughs> cha championship yeah. turbo special unique, uh, yeah. unique edition um it's yeah it's not the it's not the only time they mm -hmm. tried and that's the thing is their business so their idea is to get as much for as little as possible and your yeah. your idea is to get as much for as little as possible it's just the opposite yeah. and so that exactly. that's where the battle begins but yeah anybody who bought i still remember fucking going in and it was like turbo street fighter 2 special fucking something edition. i know I was, I was like jesus christ really <laughs> i mean it was just there was yeah. so many different yeah. versions of that game and it happened with it was, other games too that's just the one that it was so funny because then you had mortal kombat then you had mortal kombat 2 then you had mortal kombat 3 and you still have street fighter 2 i'm like Come on, guys. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, yeah. In the yeah. in the fact that they, or by the time they released the Turbo Ultimate Special Unbelievable Edition, <laughs> Mortal Kombat had like eight games. <laughs> They're all fuck you, bitches. <laughs> they just continually make games. They're not the best all the time, but because there was hmm. one, I know a lot of people dislike. What was it? Was it Mortal Kombat <laughs> versus 3D. DC? I think I no. think also the one that went 3D. The first one that went yeah, 3D, that 3D one was popular. the worst one. That yeah, was, that a, was is that? Are you talking about the Street Fighter one that went 3D? No, Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. It was like, what was it? Was it nine or? I don't remember I don't which remember. one of them it was. I just remember, wasn't there a Street Fighter EX or FX or WX or whatever that was? Yeah, there 3D? was an EX, I think. Yeah. Wow. I don't remember. I don't remember if it, was, if it was 3D, though. All right. And then the next question Mr. Bubbles. Hello, Mr. Bubbles. Thanks for asking a, a question. I love your name. Um, what's your favorite Easter egg in a video game? Hmm. I would say the developer's heads in Doom. Developer's the original, heads in Doom. The original Doom. <laughs> Were they there, like there was a hidden area that you could get to and the developers had basically texture mapped their own faces onto the heads on top of a pike. Um, <laughs> just very on on point. For me, I would also say like NBA Jam had like Hillary Clinton and um and bill clinton it had it had like a bunch of secret yes. codes and i love mm. that you could do those there's a big head mode in that that was one of the first games i remember having a lot of codes <laughs> like a lot mm. of secrets um mm. yeah what other easter eggs yeah, well. uh i mean the one that comes to mind for me is like from my childhood with uh dark forces like um finding max from sam and max in one of the secrets oh yeah i remember that <laughs> that was cool or oh, no the the alien in uh um outlaws yeah that too yeah, yeah. with the cow there, as well. yeah with the cow yeah that was a good easter egg <laughs> oh man uh, most, okay i yeah. now i remember what you mean what were we gonna say yeah. uh but most recently i would say uh the third and final expansion for mafia 3 uh sign of the times uh one of the dead cultists that you come across is actually uh hayden blackman the head of hangar 13 oh i'm like oh i see what you did there guys yeah that was that was funny <laughs> it's crazy do you have any g or do you have any uh reg um, I can only think of of Easter eggs in like Excel, Microsoft Excel. What like what? <laughs> like uh, I think Excel two thousand had a little car racing game in it. Oh no, there was um, a flight simulator in one too, wasn't it? Yeah, there was one one with a flight simulator. So yeah, just I, I, hi hidden small games in Office software. I changed my <laughs> uh, my uh, answer. I've given this answer before, but I'm going to change it to the Sega Master System having the snail ma maze game in it if you turned it on without a cartridge. And almost nobody mm. knew that. And if you turned it on without a cartridge, you could play like, a, 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 you could be a snail running around a, a maze. And I don't know why, but when I was younger, no cartridge <laughs> meant nothing. And so it's so weird to see a game like with no yeah. cartridge in there. It's so cool. Uh, next up is Robert Sims says, how do you feel about PUBG being nominated for Game of the Year? Not okay. released yet. I mean, it's it's a popular game. It's not surprising. Yeah. And based on popularity, I mean, but yeah, I mean, well, I mean, what else is it if yeah. it's up for voting? That's I mean, I, I will say this about it. What, it. what it's done is it's changed the whole like attitude of first person shooters. And I think this is, might be a reason why people are going away from COD and like Battlefield where you when you die, you respawn, you respawn, you respawn. But in a game like PUBG, and, and PUBG is not the originator of this, the fact that it's just so tense where you have one life True. and then that's it. Yeah. So I think that's the appealing factor of PUBG and the fact that it is so ridiculously popular right now, along with uh, Fortnite Battle, what, Battle Royale? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I have a really pedantic problem with it. The game's not out yet. Yeah, exactly. It's not, it's not, yeah. It's not released yet. It's this whole early access thing i mean let's let's wait until they do a final release before we say game of the year yeah I mean, it's only obviously one map had right a now. huge impact right i mean yeah. it's it's a 
amazingly popular game, fine, that's yeah. great. They're making lots yeah. of, but I think the, even they said, we're not really sure we deserve to be in the running for this. Yeah, they're the main programmer, I, their CEO said that, like somebody mm. high said that, yeah. Of course, the problem there is maybe they do the go the Warframe digital ext extremes route and just go into perpetu perpetual beta. True. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, game of the year doesn't matter because I think everybody does it differently, too. And so whenever mm. you say here, let's vote on game of the year, that makes no sense because that's not my mm. game of the year. And so if you if you say here's five games, I can't vote for game of the year because my game won't be on there. So like it doesn't matter to me. I think that's just, like somebody said, a popularity contest more than anything. The fact that it isn't released, it would be like having ARC Game of the Year. Be like, let's have ARC Game of I Can Run, because that's really what <laughs> well, needs to happen. ARC um, did release, so... Uh, <laughs> nah. But it had Game of the Year prior to releasing. You're talking yeah, about okay. now. I, sorry, I was talking yeah. about when the yeah. year it got released. Okay. Um, so for me, Game of the Year also, I don't make lists ever on purpose for Game of the Year, because to me it's what I, what I feel at the end of the year. So a game from February can yeah. Horizon was March, I think, or February. A game can stick with me that long. That's obviously a game of the year contender. To me, game of the year doesn't really it's not popularity, it's not anything. It is the game of the year, the one that I remember the most for, you know, mm -hmm. it's good reasons, of course. That would be stupid if it was also for bad reasons. <laughs> um but that's why Oxen Free for me won, because it stuck with me. So yeah. I, I I don't know. Game of the year is always weird. It's it's even hard for me to do it is, yeah. an award for it because it's like it, I just, I don't know. I mean, yeah, can you say PUBG is there? Can you say, like, what if a game is fully released, but it's its DLC that causes you to think it's game of the year? Do you say it's Horizon mm. plus yeah. Frozen Wilds for DLC? It can feel pretty arbitrary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, sorry we didn't really answer that, but that's our answer that we didn't, that we, I don't think any of us would probably agree this year anyway. There's also so many good games. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It'll be weird if we all sat, we'll have to, we'll have to do that. We'll have to sit down January and go. Also, <laughs> I don't know why somebody's doing this, but I saw on my Twitter, people were already awarding game of the year. Guys, the year's not over. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At all. I so don't, I have I mean, no I clue what you're, discussions yet either. Yeah. Uh, that there are yeah. games in December Wait coming until out. until December, man. Right. Yeah. There were games prior to Star yeah. Wars. I'm not saying Star Wars is game of the year. I'm saying there were game <laughs> game of the year awards going out prior to Star Wars being released. Yeah. You're, it's not game of the year. It's game of the first ten months. That makes no fucking sense to me whatsoever. Yeah. So uh, like Costco it. selling Christmas stuff in September. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I can no, do that. September rush, is pretty right? late. Here September started in July this year. Yeah. Well, Did they? Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you have the snows in the mountains and the pine yeah. trees. So. There you go. Uh, at, I'm I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing this question wrong. Um. Or this this uh, this person's name wrong. I sorry. I'm sorry. It's like Azra Razali. Do you guys use sound cards for gaming? And do you guys recommend using a sound card versus onboard? So for PC owners, sound cards? Yes, no. I don't. Nope. No. What about you, Tommy? Yeah, I, uh, I I use the audio interface for everything. Um, onboard sound. Okay. Has some issues. It depends on on your motherboard manufacturer as far as how good the the equipment is. Yeah. Um. And I mean, I, I used to be, man, back in the day, AdLib, AdLib Gold, Sound Blaster 16, uh, yeah. you know, all of that sort of wonderful stuff. But after the Sound Blaster 16, it, it kind of became unnecessary a lot of the time. Yeah. What about, um, what about you, Silver? Uh, same. I used to go with sound, sound cards as well. Like, uh, was it XFi? Mm -hmm. I think yep. yeah. um, I went with for a while as well. Um, I think that was probably the, the last sound card I, card I had. After that, it's been my, mostly on board. Yeah, I mean, for me, um, onboard has an issue with recording usually because it'll pick up the motherboard uh, CPU, yeah, uh, CPU fans. It's noisy. Yeah, so I've I've switched out to external, and I've used everything from I think I'm using a Asus Sonar like 7.1 mm -hmm. right now, external, and that's fine. The thing about sound cards is now most there isn't a lot of advancement, and because Microsoft bought you know Aural, I I don't know I'm not pronouncing that right right, but Aural 3D or whatever, which was the only good real 3D sound. There hasn't mm -hmm. been there hasn't been very many advances, so I also just use a audio interface that that has good recording and also good output. Um, I think in the end, I mean, I've even seen people who who are using this five point one or seven point one um, Realtek chips, and they're they've made huge strides. Onboard audio has made huge strides compared to what it used to be, but for mm -hmm. me, I just can't use it. So I don't yep. know. If I would use it, I probably would if I wasn't recording, I guess. I don't know. I mean, Realtek chips aren't that bad anymore. They're not great, but. Um, 
And then do any of you guys use micro, uh, use uh, amplifiers or anything like that for your audio, for your headphones? No. 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 Everything I run through the, the quad capture, I know you use the same thing. Yeah. Eric, right um yep. and then just for the microphone i need a i need a cloud lifter because the sm7b is really quiet mm. um and that's all it is i use um i do have to use an amp because i test headphones so i use a noob sound tube amp to it's a preamp tubes and then digital ec, digital at the end mm -hmm. and um that works really well especially for the super high ohm headphones but yeah i mean when it comes to audio it just you know you can see graphics right and audio to me matters more in like the discrete stuff. Atmos matters, but Atmos can still, as long as a chip can support it, it's going to sound good most likely because Atmos is pretty fucking awesome all by itself. So I, I think audio for chips, people just don't really talk about it anymore. A lot of people I know just wouldn't even know what an external yeah. sound card is. You'd be like, yeah. no, it's mm -hmm. outside and they're all, but isn't it USB? Well, USB 3, which is fucking super fast. So it's like I, back in the day, if you did external, you had to watch out for a ton of stuff now. You know, you can... you'd probably gain a lot more if you took the same money and invested into better uh, headphones or, or speakers. speakers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I will say the biggest jump in audio I've ever done ever was buying monitors, and I had for the longest time not used monitors for various reasons. And I bought some ProSonus eight inch. I, I covered this in one of my videos. I um, uh, amplified eight inch monitors, and you forget what flat music or what flat response sounds like because you're so used to buying a hit, a, a system, and it's you know geared for gaming. So it's you'll see more bass. Well, that's not that's technically yeah. not what you want. You don't want it adjusting what the developers put in. You want to be able to do that on your own. And so many home speaker systems do that when it comes to computers. And so yep. studio studio monitors, absolutely. Yeah, dude. Um, it, I, I use uh, Alesis, uh oh, Elevate series. Um, yeah, and I have for a long time. They're just they're great. They don't they don't do any of that. Let's add a bunch of bass nonsense. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. able to be done if you want. Like for example, oh, yeah. uh, my add it yourself. Yeah, my external allows you know a graphic equal. You can do all that yourself, but I would rather have the speakers be as flat as possible. Have you ever used Dicky monitors? No, I have not. I almost nope. bought uh, them. And I got M these. audio and then the Alesis ones. Yeah. Yeah. I almost bought the M audios too. Cause I've liked them in the past, but I can't remember mm -hmm. what it was. There was a particular reason why I went with these and I had forgotten what good monitors sound like. Cause you go to a studio and you hear it and you're like, mm -hmm. fuck, this sounds amazing. Then you go home and you always think, Oh, it must be their room. No, it's trust yeah. me when you get good monitors and you start playing. And I, by the way, if people are wondering why we're saying monitors and thinking it means fucking computer monitors, I understand. I apologize. Yes. That's not good, what good I mean. Point. Monitors are just speakers that don't have all the adjustments. They're a flat response to everything. They don't add bass or add treble yeah, or any the, of the crazy the, shit. The studio monitor is, you think of like a recording studio. So you've got, you know, your artist, your, your band in the other room or recording person in the other room. They're listening on headphones and talking into the mic. And the, the, your, the whole point of the studio monitors is to monitor what's going on on the other side. So yeah. you're in there on the mixing board and you're going to get the, the exact flat response on everything so that then you can mix and match and, and figure out what you want the sound to look like later on. Yeah, because I will tell you guys one thing. If you're ever making videos and you're using home speakers and you're not using monitors, you can think it sounds good. You'll upload that video and people are like, what the fuck is happening? And you're all, oh yeah, that's because my speakers made up for whatever weakness that uh, there might be inherently in vocals or in whatever. And so, yeah, it's, it's quite easy to mess those up. Um, that was a good question. Audio, we, we don't get that as yeah. much. Last question, Noah Elliott, who's also always in the Discord. Hello. He says, what kind of new open world games do you want to see in the future? Mm. Okay. Let's see. I did not watch the trailer, <laughs> but Sony announced the Japanese open world uh, feudal Japan one at their, at their event just a couple weeks ago or whatever. Yeah. And that kind of thing would interest me. Being a samurai, riding around on a horse, open world. I would, I would be okay with that. You know, having having played uh, Origins, I would really love something similar set in just the Roman Republic, um, just because I love, I adore that era uh, as sort of the building block for our whole society. I think that would be really interesting. Mm. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Um, I've I've played a bunch of Sea of Thieves, and I can't talk about it, so I'll talk about Skull and Bones instead. I think that Skull and Bones would be an excellent open world game if they let you get off the ship whenever you want, dive into the water, and go and hunt for treasure. Yeah. Um, I just, I'm, I'm big into pirates. Pirates are great. Uh, and yeah. 
that would be, I, I could really dig that. Same thing with the Black Flag stuff, right? I mean, being yeah. able to get on the ship whenever you want and run around the ship. And now that's what surprises me is that why didn't Ubisoft go with that angle? You know, for it, yeah, Storm instead of the, say, Look, the sim, yeah. right? Like, yeah, I mean, we love the ships, but we also want to be pirates and go on land and go to these various outlets throughout the Caribbean and have plunder and build up our own little thing, you know? And, mm-hmm. I didn't get oh, that. that's that's that that'll take a lot more effort is probably the reason obviously i imagine yeah. what about you reg any open world things you'd like to see i i don't know if i actually want to see any open world thing i i think i, I definitely need a break from open world stuff and just totally valid get get a bit bit back to yeah. more linear experiences mm-hmm. I, think I, I had my fill of open world for a while i would have said uh caveman but primal despite it not really knocking out of the park it's one of those games that like once somebody plays it a lot of people i know have really liked it and man i was i really fucking love that game and uh but it's like the only thing i can really think for open world is just picking a time frame or a genre exactly and a futuristic one i i originally had heard some rumors about an open world game that was going to be like a gta but in the future on a space station and you were like expanse the tv show but you were running mm-hmm. around doing all these things, and I was like, Expense. "Holy oh, fuck, God. that yeah. would be awesome!" <laughs> that would be kind of laser guns and flying yeah. cars. Yeah, and um, almost like a properly done, you know, Mass Effect One uh, Citadel. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, something like that. But usually, I just have to look at the time frame, and I think Cyberpunk 2077 is going to cover some of that. Isn't it 2077? Yep. Yeah. 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 yeah, but isn't that that's on target for like 2020 or 2021? Dude, or I'll be like dead that. of a heart attack way yeah, before that game ever. Yeah, comes it won't out. be. It will be gone. <laughs> yeah, we'll be. But it'll exactly. be just dust by the time that fucking it, thing it, comes out. It's not the they game made... title; it's the release year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. they made a brave claim with that one, though. They said it's be- it's going to be better in every way than The Witcher Three. So right. well, get yeah. your get Hopefully your pitchforks be... ready because <laughs> yeah, it's, exactly. it's a reason for us to live, I suppose. <laughs> but. I would say, like, short of a like a, a futuristic like open world game, which would be really awesome, I would like an open world game set in like Las Vegas during the height, you know, the fifties, uh, sixties. Oh yeah, and, and probably it'd probably be in the mafia verse, you know, right. that would make the most sense. But that's kind of like where I would like to see it go, because I mean, yeah, we had Las Venturas and Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, but that was like kind of like a smaller scale version. Just like, you know, like Grand Theft Auto Online and Grand Theft Auto 5 is a larger scale version of Los Santos, L.A., and it's just more realized. And I just want to see a realized version of Vegas and the setting and everything that went on, all the stories that we know about, all the shady shit that went down. So, like Casino, for example. So good. That would be. I'm thinking just currently, maybe something like Star Citizen, but actually releasing. (laughs) That would probably be my closest one to my dream I, yeah, game I think Star Citizen world. right now, what I'm seeing of that looks so exactly like what I want. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, and playing it and seeing it actually work and sitting there going like, yeah, this is exactly, exactly yeah. I, what I, I want. I had not the same experience you had with my personal playtime with that game. Yeah, but didn't you have tech... You, yeah, I thought you had technical issues. I'm talking about yes, actually I did have it. technical issues, yeah. so I didn't... I could never could get past right. technical issues. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um... I would, I mean, that's, that's a game. Like there, we're always going to have ones. Some people are going to have technical issues and not, especially in a beta of a beta of a beta. But mm-hmm. I'll just say that, um, that yeah, like cyber, the reason why it's hard to come up with the answers is because I think a couple games out there are sort of aiming at what I want and yeah. including, including star citizen. Um, but it's, I, it, I sort of like the idea of the Vegas thing more than any, like anything that I was that's coming out or that I was thinking of, I would like to see, you know, when it was like Bugsy, mm-hmm. yeah, like that time frame. There could be some pretty some pretty cool stuff. Also, I, Hughes. I, also I gotta say, L.A. Noir has really reinvigorated like that time for me too. Exactly. That, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So absolutely, especially back there... when cops weren't beating each other. Like it wasn't like <laughs> what you gonna do when the cop. It was more, you know, you know, hello, ma'am. I sort of dug that time frame in L.A. Noir. <laughs> So that could yeah. be cool. What were we gonna say? Well, there's still plenty of bad cops, though. Well, yeah, that's true. There's a there's a VR push for LA Noir, isn't there? Yeah, yep. December. There is, yeah. December. Yeah, yeah. December. Like, isn't that uh, just like a the separate previews I've VR read are thing? That it's pretty good. Uh, you, you were both talking. What? So what'd you say, Reg? 
I, I said, isn't that VR thing like a separate cases mm -hmm. stuff and not the, the full game? Seven seven redone cases for mm -hmm. for that. So it was a lot of the like the interrogation kind of stuff, or that was what I had heard. Like you can kind of walk around it. That, that yeah yeah that would be fun. I just don't know. It got delayed, which so like I would that was when I was talking to Rockstar, they were like, yeah, you know, we're gonna get a code, blah blah blah, and I was continually talking about vr because mm -hmm. that's what i was excited for as well and even though i covered it i i really wish it had come out so i could see it because i don't really know i've seen some people but at different magazines talk about it but i mean i don't even believe them anymore because the number of times i've seen somebody say this game's amazing on preview and then they review it poorly and you're like <laughs> it feels really yeah, yeah. it feels really yeah. weird so when they yeah, say when they say htc you know, Vive version of, of L.A. Noir is amazing. I want, I totally would love to just sit back and be like, okay, great. But now I've been burned so many times that I'm like, yeah. I'll just, I'll wait and see, you know, how it, how it actually feels. Yeah, but, you know, being the Rockstar fanboy, I try to be, even though they do some stuff that I go like, ah, you know, they do delay a lot of stuff <laughs> and a lot of times their delays do pay off for them. So does everybody's. I mean, I don't think Rockstar's any. Oh yeah, but, Sometimes it, yeah. I mean, Rockstar has shit games too when they release. Look at fucking GTA Five. Remember the PC version of that? I still but four or four, four. Yeah, yeah, four. four. Yeah. So it's like yeah. they're they're well, that's the same. The reason, yeah. I mean, who yeah. knows? Like it'll it'll happen if it happens. I I won't put any belief into Polygon or somebody's previews. <laughs> Sorry, it'll never happen. It doesn't matter if it's my favorite developer in the world because they always every developer has a failure yeah. or two. It is going to be interesting to see how it is. I mean. Obviously, there's certain things that you're not going to be able to do with the VR version yeah. of L.A. Noir. So, yeah. I mean, being up. I mean, it also it also depends on the circumstances uh, at which the preview was was held. <laughs> was it a preview event, right. or was it like was it an invite where he was invited into the studio or whatever? Like, um, because I mean, in that in those cases, the preview version that they're going to be playing is specifically tailored to be previewed. Yeah, and it's going to not necessarily going to represent the the current experience of the game at that time. Exactly. Slice. Do you know? Yeah. I, once again, I just I have to say this because I truly do believe that it can get negative so easy all the time. The fact is, is that of all the companies that I've seen them just say, "Hey, here's the game as it is now," is Ubisoft, and when they like were like, "Come yeah. look at Watch Dogs 2." They were just like, here's a cramped booth, play watch. They didn't say, play only this. They didn't say, here's a special tutorial for you. They didn't say, here's a special... They were like, here's some orange juice. Sit down and play Watch Dogs for as long as you want. In whatever way you want. And we did a walk yeah. in the walk. Like, I, I was even nervous they were going to be like, no, we want you to do mission. And they did say, if you're having a problem on this mission in particular, balancing may be an issue, come get us, whatever. But they didn't. They weren't controlling. And as, some people be like, here's a review event. Sit in a... Yeah fucking hotel for five hours and yeah. just that's not how real and, i eat pop tarts and fucking get up and piss uh, and like <laughs> I, and not only that but they have uh, they've run free open betas for uh true steep ghost recon wildlands and for honor that's true, that's true. Mm -hmm. prior to release where you could try out the game that's true yeah. mm -hmm. also they're the only company i know of where i'll like destroy a game and they'll be like so anyway the next game is and i'll be oh, okay cool because <laughs> i'm telling you those assassin's creed 2 side games not good. G <laughs> Ghost Recon Boring Lands? Not good. Sorry if you like Ghost Recon Wildlands people, but that was a boring fucking game, man. Oh my god. Um, I it, just, I like that they're willing to be a little bit abrasive. You know, their E3 true. press events are, you know, they're, they'll, they're willing to swear on them, which yeah. nobody else will do. You know, they'll show ridiculous, the, the Just Dance nonsense with dancing giraffes <laughs> and shit on god. stage. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's, it, they, they have they have a corporate attitude that is kind of neat. Yeah, yeah, they lie a lot of the time, and yeah, they they do good games and bad games, fine. But there is some uh, there's some class and some style there, yeah. uh, which the other big yeah. ones don't don't have. Yeah, they don't at all. It's I also think that unfortunately, um, when you're being attacked all the time, like Ubisoft is, I can't necessarily feel like they would do all this stuff if they weren't trying to garner. Um, fans attention all the time that they're like being constantly bought out rumors and stuff like that sometimes i feel like it's yeah. it's a little bit like we need to make sure we stay on the good side i that's probably just too much tinfoil hat but occasionally i've been like what would they be like if for the last three years vivendi hadn't been 
buying little chunks of their lives away? You know, would, yeah. would they be the same? Because um, it there was a confirmation on something about that recently too, that the Vivendi is not currently planning a takeover in the next six months. Like they, they've maybe pushed back their expectations, which is good. Um, as soon as Vivendi takes over Ubisoft, the quality will dive. Oh yeah. I, I agree. I mean, I, it feels to me like they are just literally waiting like an infection and they just, they take <laughs> yeah. what they can when they can. And they are totally fine with waiting 10 years. But I, I think that like a jilted lover, something about Ubisoft Vivendi will not ever let him go. They'll just be like, I'll mm -hmm. kill you before you can love another. <laughs> it's like a really bad fucking CW TV show with Vivendi. And could be they just have a grudge with the Gimos. Um, yeah. 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 Well, and now there there is a possibility that they can get themselves out of this, right? It just and the longer that Vivendi yeah. waits, the more that the Gimos can can get control back. All they have to do yeah. is get to 50%. If they can get to 50%, then what are they never, at now? They're never gonna lose it. Are they in their 30s or are they higher? I don't remember. I don't remember. I'd have to look it up. Yeah, they've been really trying to buy it back. Yeah, interesting yeah, stuff. Yeah. I, I, I would, I would like to see that never happen. So we'll hope. Um, that's it for us. I want to say thanks for Tarmac for showing up, sitting down, talking random games with us. Thanks for everybody Thank for putting much. in questions. I am crossing my fingers. This will get posted. Everything looks fine. <laughs> Everything looks fine. What? How many times have I said that? Pretty much every time. Yeah, pretty much every time I've said, <laughs> I've said, okay, looks like it's looks looks like it's recorded. Everybody, we're good. And then get drunk and never post it. Just joking. I never get drunk. Anybody have anything to add before we turn this thing off? No. And cross our fingers. Okay. All right. So everybody, peace out. Thank you very much for watching. I'm gonna turn this off and cross my fingers.